biggest, meanest tailback hombres they've ever seen west of the Rio Grande. One covers ground like the Madison Express. The other one chugs along like the Salt Lake City Steamer. College football always knew this day had come. Tonight, they're fixing to have a showdown. Showdown time for Ron Dane and Chris Fumatu, Maafala, Utah and Wisconsin. It's the Copper Bowl and happy holidays, everybody. Brad Nestler and Gary Danielson, you got the Christmas tie there? All set. We've been waiting for a gift. I think we got one tonight when we get these two Good big fellas game. together. You bet. And these uh, two have been sensational. Fumatu Maafala, almost a thousand yard season this year. And for Ron Dane, he set the freshman rushing record, having passed Herschel Walker over 1,800 yards on the ground. There's the tail of the tape, I guess, 260 and 275. That's actually probably a little bit low considering all the banquets we've had up here. <laughs> exactly. You know, two guys, you, you think they're both the same size, they're the same, but not really. Fuamatu Maafala kind of wiggles like that. Yeah. We're Dane, Boom. we're Dane, That's Dane, one syllable. Dane all, all night. And because of that, Utah's going to have to stop the Dane train <laughs> if they're going to stop Wisconsin because they're going to get all they can handle. How do they and do that it? means they're free safety. Harold Musk is going to have to move up. An outstanding football player usually plays a little deeper tonight. They're going to probably put nine men near the line of scrimmage. The problem with that is, will the big pass play make the difference in this football game? Ron McBride said this game is about manhood. They have to show their men to stop the run. And on the other side, Wisconsin knows that they're facing a quarterback named Fouts, who when he's on can be very, very dangerous. And Wisconsin has the worst pass defense in the Big Ten. They're geared up at Arizona Stadium. Wisconsin won the toss. Utah will kick. And Aaron Stecker, fourth in the Big Ten this year, back in return formation. Dan Pulsifer set to kick off for the Utes who were 8-3 and three on the regular season, 6-2 and two in the Mountain Division of the WAC, Wisconsin at 7-5, and five, and here they come. Stecker got across the 20, got belted at the 22-yard line, and that's where the Wisconsin offense will go to work. And it looks like this, Mike Samuel, they do not have a great passing game, the Badgers. They, quite frankly, don't need one, but he's got only eight touchdown passes and ten interceptions. Dane and Martin in the backfield with him. Donald Hayes, he could present a matchup problem for the small cornerbacks for Utah. Lyles and Merritt round out the receiving court. Up front, all over 300 pounds, including Jerry Wunsch, a second-team All-American, at about 330 with Castro, Engler, Vanderbilt, and McIntyre. First play of the ball game on offense for Wisconsin. Guess who? Dane got across the 25, and he ran into the guy Gary just talked about. Harold Lusk will have to come up from that safety spot, pick up of about three. Kafusi is the biggest man on the front wall for Utah. He'll have his hands full when they go to that jumbo set with the extra tight end to his side. Akina, Frank, and Kia on the front four for Utah. Robert Love's not the biggest linebacker in the country, but he's second team all whack and leads his team in tackles with Hooks and Godfrey. And in the secondary, Lust not only will have to force uh, against the run, he's got six interceptions and 19 in his career. Lawson, Dart, and Richards round out the secondary for the Utes. And Dane straight up the middle. And again, Lust is part of the tackle as he got out to the 30-yard line. Love is on the bottom of the pile. Harold Lusk, uh, Brad, as we talked about, he is the guy that's going to have to make the biggest change in his football game. He talks to himself now. He'll be talking to everybody as this game goes along. He will move up a little bit in this game. He usually lines up 12 yards deep. The changeup for this game, he moves up to nine. Now, that doesn't seem like a lot, but the goal of this football game is to keep Ron Dane's yardage to seven yards or less, less per carry. The problem, will they hit the deep ball behind them? So far, they've done it. Three and then four, and now third and three from the 30-yard line. Lyles, the tight end in motion. They will pass, or try to. Samuel hit as he threw, intended for Hayes. That one never had a chance because Samuel got belted as he let go of the ball. 
Yeah, coming from the outside that time, Utah put in more guys that they could pick up, they played inside technique, and forced Samuel, the guy Utah really wants to try to beat him, to beat him because so far in this season, Mike Samuel's been able to have games when he could throw the ball within the running game. He's okay, but when he has to throw the ball, he's had problems. John Hall, both the putter and the kicker for Wisconsin, set to kick away. Kevin Dyson and Harold Lusk. Both are dangerous return men. Lush does not like to fair catch a punt, if at all possible. Only this one will be Dyson from the 28. Got around the first man and got across the 35 to the 36. 42-yard kick and about eight yards on the return for Dyson as Mike Fouts will bring out the running Utes offense. Juan Johnson over 700 yards himself with Mahapala almost 1,000 and Fouts with 21 touchdown passes. His favorite receiver is a guy who just fielded that punt. 53 catches for Dyson, eight of them touchdowns. Chris Starbers on the tight end and Rocky Henry, the other wide out. And up front, Chad Folk, all whack at center. Not very tall, but extremely strong. Davis, Walker, Sims, and Sobrowski round out the front wall for Utah. First down, first play on offense for Utah. And surprise, surprise. Got him deep. Roll off. Man out, there's Henry. And at the last second, closing in a hurry, Bob Adamov. Or that would have been a huge gain inside the 20. Took him too long to throw the ball that time. And they had him matched up against a strong safety to Henry. That should have been a big play. There you see Henry. Adamov will not catch him. He'll never catch him. <laughs> they ran 1,000 yards. He wouldn't. You can see the ball is underthrown. Fouts waited too long to throw it. They get downfield quicker with the pass that in the BYU game, the whole game we waited for him to throw deep. And right. they throw deep on first down into the first play of the game here. You think they listen to the tape? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Second down and 10. Mahavala hit at the line. And no gain, or very little. Neil McClusick inside made the stop for Wisconsin's defense that's pretty darn good against the run. Here's the upfront group. They moved Tom Burke the last five games to defensive end. That let them move Brian Jurowitz inside for more push. McClusick, who made the tackle, Tarek Sala led the Big Ten in sacks. Pete Monty led the whole Big Ten in tackles. Over 165 on the season. Carter and Lysik round out that core. Kevin Huntley will play both ways tonight. Started free safety. He'll play some wide receiver. Adamoff just made that play early. Campbell and Suttle round out the Wisconsin secondary. On a third down at 10 now for Mike Fouts out of the shotgun. Has time, locks it. Deep out, incomplete intended. For Terrence Keehan, incomplete, so it's three and out Utah. That time, Kevin Cosgrove, defensive coordinator, played a robber defense. You can see the outside technique right here. This guy's going to try to go outside. The perfect technique, because he knew he had help to the inside with a free safety. You can see that scouting right there. They knew that Utah was going to throw a lot of the corner route. A lot of people call it a China route. A, one guy running a smash, the other guy on the corner. Utah, a punt. Not a very good one. Not at all. Off the side of his foot and out of bounds over near the 40-yard line. So Hunter Shanks won, and Wisconsin will have good field position when we come back. Come on, Scott, give me a fry. Uh-huh. America's favorite fries, McDonald's. Go get them. Please. Get your own, man. Bayer. Powerful pain relief and so much more. Can you believe what's possible these days? Travel arrangements right from your own computer, instant stock quote. And can you believe unlimited use of the world's number one internet online service for one low monthly fee? That's right, no more hourly charges. Don't do it. Go with number one, America Online. Join today. Ford Ranger is so useful it can even do your laundry for you. First, make sure your clothes are dirty enough. Excellent! Add detergent. Fill to line with water. Wash. Put on spin cycle. And hang your clothes out to dry. Ford Ranger, America's best-selling compact pickup, starting at just 10880 Definitely makes the white wider.
ESPN's presentation of the Copper Bowl is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And by McDonald's. Have you had your break today? So each team has had a three and out. 12-16 remaining in the first quarter of the Copper Bowl from Tucson, Arizona. And Wisconsin, good field position after an 18-yard punt by Chris Hunter. And the Badgers work now from their own 46-yard line. Dane gets his first seven-yard game, Gary, but he held him right to seven. And then Robert Love made the tackle. Barry Alvarez in his third bowl game and in his seventh season at Wisconsin. He's 2-0 oh in bowl games, having won a Rose Bowl and a Hall of Fame. And this guy basically is the bowl history. Ron McBride in his seventh year for Utah because uh, he's had him in three bowls in the last four years. He has said that this year his team has played well when they've been challenged, almost backs to the wall. They lost to their interstate rival then the BYU. Let's see if they've been embarrassed enough to play and stop this run game. They held Dane to six on that last carry, but here he comes for a first down. As the freshman goes down to the 41-yard line, as we check in with Adrian Karsten. Well, Brad, as we've seen so far, as good as Wisconsin's offensive backfield may be, on defense, Wisconsin has a weakness. Their decent defensive backfield has given up close to 3,000 yards passing this year. So who does that put the pressure on? The guys right up front. Guys like Brian Jurowitz. Now, this guy's got a great pass rush technique. He's knocked down nine passes at the line of scrimmage so far this year. He loves to play against short quarterbacks. Remember, Fouts is only about five, nine and a half. Another man to keep an eye on, linebacker Tarek Saleh. He has led the league the last two years in sacks, 14 this year. He's going outside. Jurowitz coming inside. Those two guys got to keep the pressure off the Wisconsin defensive secondary. And Mike Samuel going downtown to and Kevin Huntley, who we told you would play both ways. And yeah. he overshot him. And they went to Kevin Huntley because since Tony Simmons has left this football team with that foot injury, there has been a little drop-off in speed with this team. It's closed up the defenses and made it tougher on this guy right here to hit the routes he's used to hitting. That should give Dane now a little bit more room to work that they loosened it up at least by going downtown on that toss. And it'll be second down and 10. Barry Alvarez saw his sensational freshman rumble for 339 yards in the season finale at Hawaii. A lot of shifting up front by Utah to confuse the block. Dane. I'll give Utah credit. Love met him in the hole. I think one of the mistakes that people try to do when they're playing against Dane is tackle him too low. Even his own teammate Pete Monty said, you can't tackle this guy around the ankles all the time. You've got to grab him onto his hips mm -hmm. if you can fit your arms around him. And then you hold on and hope you can get some help from someone else. Monty said if you try to tackle him too low, he'll step on you yeah. on the way over. That hurts. <laughs> So far, Dean has not broken many tackles. I don't think he's broken one in this football game. Whether he gets 10 yards or not, if you can hold him to very few broken tackles, you'll be doing a good job. Third down at six, Wisconsin. 47% of the year in their third down conversion. Bootleg for Samuel. He's going to run with it. And he's got the first down. And Noah, Samuel's going to score. in this game now is the quarterback. <laughs> 38 yards for a touchdown. Everyone's eyes were right on Ron Dane. All of a sudden, here comes Samuel. I thought he came close to stepping out down at the bottom of the field. Utah gave up on it a little bit right I there. I think they did, and when he turned up, a good block downfield on Lusk. But then he just goes in the end zone, and people who have watched Wisconsin know that's not Daryl Bevel running any longer. That's right. <laughs> John Hall for the extra point. And Wisconsin strikes with their running game. But it's number 10, not number 33. Samuel puts Wisconsin in front 7-0. This is a saguaro seed. From this tiny dream, giant cactus like this are born every year. In Tucson, Arizona, this is happening to high-technology companies, too. 
Tucson is becoming a popular place to grow a company. In the shade of such giants as IBM, Hughes, America Online, and most recently Microsoft. Growing companies are coming here, attracted by the outdoor lifestyle, the very favorable business climate, and the renowned University of Arizona. Called Optics Valley because of its growing optics cluster, Tucson recently attracted OptoPower Corporation, a leader in high-power diode lasers. The University of Arizona is on the leading edge of optical sciences research, which helps us in recruiting very high-quality people. If you're considering a better environment for your company, contact the Greater Tucson Economic Council on the World Wide Web at futurewest.com. Tucson, an exciting place to do business. Bullwinkle, we passed by here an hour ago. We're here. I thought we were there. Bullwinkle. Oh, don't okay, worry, that's enough TV for today. Dad! Let's go for a ride. Yeah, come on, we're out of here. Dad, where are we going? Better be good. We gotta go to the bathroom, honey. See that? See, 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 see. That's cool. Where do we gotta be there? Dad, can you take them home? Ford Explorer. Because the world's too big to be left unexplored. We're there. Mike Samuel, who's telling Brad Childers, Coach, that is the best I can run. <laughs> He's right. The counter action. What you'll see is a lot of action here. Dane going this way. And then... Cecil Martin, the fullback, gets a good spike block on the outside linebacker that time. Love, right in the corner of the screen. And you wonder, from this look, whether Samuel stepped out right there. The official is right here to look at it. But, Fred, we've got more than one camera. <laughs> and when you look at the second camera... There's stop, green right there. There is green right there. And there, there, you can't say that right here. <laughs> there is green in them there. Yeah. That's right. That means seven points. 38-yard run is his career long for a touchdown. 7 on Wisconsin and Hall to kick. Lawson and Dyson on the back. Deep for Utah. Hall doesn't usually give anybody a chance to run anything back. No, if you want to catch one of Hall's kicks, you better buy a ticket. Because yep. they're usually end up in the, in the stand. You've got to be first row end zone, <laughs> usually. And this is the thin air out here. That's not even legal. You know, they just bomb that thing. <laughs> So now Utah goes back to work for its own 20. Capping the 54-yard drive and 205. Don't think that won't help Ron Dane in finding some cracks because now another weapon has been established. They've thrown the ball deep twice. They've run the bootleg with their quarterback. Now they can go back to Dane. See if Utah goes back to the air. Maafala got about two. Chris has had some tough sledding against Lysik and Monty inside. Along with McClusick who gets off the bottom of the pile. Wisconsin is a good rush defensive team. If you're going to run the ball effectively on them, I think you're going to have to show them that you can throw the ball first and take them out of their run game. You know, Pete, Monty, Sala, McClusick, Jerwitz, they are good at stopping Big Ten run games. I and mean, when they wind up against Ohio State in Ohio, they will not be phased by Utah's running game. Here comes a blitz on Fouts. Throws a fade, but his, his uh, wide receiver stopped out there. That was Rocky Henry. I don't know if there was a little stop and go, but Rocky did mostly stop. Yeah, it was a stop and go stop. We'll see. At that time, Fouts thought it was going to be a stop and go. And Henry had a stop go stop. And then <laughs> right at the end, a little grab. And I don't think by Jason Suttles grab there, I don't even think the ball landed in the field of play. And now Fouts, who started off slowly, and Fred Graves, the offensive coordinator, told us one of the keys of this game he fought was to get Mike Fouts off quickly in this game. He started off bad against BYU, and he never really found this game. He's streaky. Good streaks, bad streaks. There's Fred Graves. Now Fox will have to work from the shotgun with four wideouts. Let's throw the screen to Henry this time. He got a nice block, and he got a first down. Had to scramble for it a little bit. Monty finally put him down, but he got about 12. And he got an excellent block, Rocky Henry, out there after he made that catch. You know, remember last time Utah in third and long, they threw the corner route and Wisconsin was outside technique. So now this time Fred Graves says, hey, you want to play outside technique? We'll run the screen to the wide receiver and pick up the script, pick it up outside. Fred Graves who scripts a lot of the plays, 14 of them to begin the game. I think already is out of his script. They've had two third and longs. First down. 
the 32. Play action. Bounce wants to come back the other way on a screen pass incomplete. Boy, that was a, a big miss. You know, that, that play called for maybe like a little a pitching wedge, and he had a seven iron over that guy. <laughs> that was a tight end screen as Chris yeah. Jerry's got out there. And, you know, Tarek Sala that time, uh, Tarek Sala, excuse me, I, I should know him. He's been doing it for four years. <laughs> you know, I mispronounce my own kid's name sometimes, too. There he is. Tarek Sala that time doesn't get off the line of scrimmage. I think he reads this when Jerry's goes away. He feels it. Look at him stop right there and see it. And that forced Fouts to throw the ball a little higher than he wanted to. Sala led the Big Ten in sacks this year and last year and in tackles for loss. He's a guy that uh, is always revved up to come off that corner. This time he takes an inside stunt and the inside running game has a big opening for Utah. Juan Johnson, as we said, you can't just gang up on Maafala because this guy had over 700 yards in the regular season. Stunt on the inside, you're expecting a pass. If you hit it right, you can make it go. Sala coming inside, Jurowitz coming around, and that is the hole right in there. You're thinking pass, pass, pass. Said, hey, coach, we watched all this film. This is the whack. You told us they were going to throw <laughs> the ball. Maafala on the sideline. You saw Fred Graves giving him an earful a little while ago, and so Johnson stays out there at the tailback spot, having picked up 13. Juan got him a first down at the 45-yard line. Juan Johnson had battled through injuries all year. He's as healthy as he's been. They'll give it to him again. This time stacked up at the line. Maybe got a yard. That's about it. Jerowitz in on the stop inside. You know, we opened up the game with Maafala, but when you have two guys that can run close to 1,800 yards like this, you've got a back just like the other team has in day. Well, when Maafala was injured against Tulsa and out of the game, Juan Johnson had 34 carries, 197 yards, and three touchdowns. Now they've got Chris back out there, the big fella. They say about 280. We were kidding around after all the banquets here in Tucson. Going to throw that wide out screen. Henry again on the run. Well, it worked before. It works this time. Just a little bit short of the first down, I think, though. Adam off in on the tackle. Henry to the outside is going to run another screen and a white block by his receiver right here. You see it. See her here. Here comes Henry inside. Dyson blocks for the other guy. The, all the linemen are upfield. You got another screen right there. You just follow in behind him. He did get enough for a first down. Forward progress right to the 45 of Wisconsin. Eighth play of the Utah drive with 7.20 remaining first quarter. They trail by a touchdown. High backfield this time. Long handoff, and that's going nowhere. Man, uh, Lysick that time, Dave Lysick came in from the back side, making that tackle in between Monty, Carter, and Lysick. Those guys came into Wisconsin together, and they played a lot of football together. Dave kind of gets overlooked sometimes because Monty's made so many tackles, and Carter's kind of a big play guy, but Lysick had to play behind Eric Underzot for a few years to earn his stripes or his badger claws, whatever you want to say, <laughs> but he, he can hit you too, number 57. Second down at 10. Three wide out group for Mike Fouts. They'll keep it on the ground though. Three or four for Maafala. And the tackle made by Diet Talibi as we check in with Adrian. Fred, the thing that Coach Graves is getting after Maafala about was the fact he's taking too much freedom with the offense here. Now, as you see, he may have re-injured that left knee as he's coming off the field. One of the reasons is he's not hitting the holes that Coach Graves coached him to. He's coming up to the line and picking his holes. He's never done this in any other game. Kind of has Coach Graves uh, confused. I'm going to find out what's going on with that injury. Whoa, well, he did over. Okay. He just made the ground shake on the other side. He went down. He's clutching the left knee. Meanwhile, it's third and seven on the field. Fouts going deep, man open, got it at the 22-yard line. You cannot throw that route any better than Mike Fouts did that time. He didn't put enough, he didn't put too much air in it, and he beat the corner, Cyril Weems, right in that angle. What a throw to Fouts, left side of your screen. You'll see this ball. As he lets it go, he's going to shoot it right here. But watch Weems, number seven, the corner, fall off his man and nearly make the play on the ball right there. That's how hard he shot that ball in there if he'd have laid it up. That ball would have been intercepted. Dettinger with a 20-yard catch 
And now it's first down, Utah at the 22 of Wisconsin. Four wideouts, empty backfield, bounce deep middle again. Incomplete. And again, he was trying to go to the same guy, Boo Benninger. Meanwhile, the big fella on the sideline, they're checking over the left leg. Looks like his ankle that time. This play was two plays ago. McClusick, he beat Jurowitz, and then I think McClusick put his... No, I, I think, it, you know, it came from behind. It might have been his own guy that time, uh, Chad Folk, who got him as he fell, fell back from his block. One of those freak things. Adrian, okay, we'll check in with Adrian after this play. Second down and ten. Five and a half minutes to go for a quarter. Here's a little shovel pass to Dyson on the run. Dyson inside the ten, and he weaves his way down to the six-yard line. It's first and goal, Utah. Sorrell Ween saved the touchdown, but Dyson, who's got all that speed, took that little shovel pass and went 15 yards. Utah got kind of away with a little bit of a hold that time, too. Here's Bendinger right to the outside. Watch how he holds Monty as this ball comes around. Monty's shirt gets ripped. Monty can't get out there. Dyson's a little too fast for him anyway, but there was a little hold on the play. Nice drive here, as I think Utah said, hey, this passing looks a little better than the running against these guys. Well, plays already that's covered 74 yards. And on the 13th play of the drive, it's first and goal at the Wisconsin 6. About a yard for Juan Johnson, who came in, or Chris Fumatu Mafala. Adrian, what do you have on the injury? Very tense moments over here. What they're checking is his left ankle. It is not that same knee he uh, injured earlier this year, uh, year against Tulsa. They're checking for a fracture because he says they heard something pop. He felt movement in there. Remember something else, guys. He's playing 10 to 12 pounds heavier than he was when we saw him against BYU. He's carrying more weight. Remember what I said about Coach Graves getting after him about all this cutting stuff? He's never done this any other time in the season, so he may be his own worst enemy here, but uh, they may take him in here shortly for x-rays, guys. I'll keep you updated. He's on that bench all by himself right now. His teammates with a second and goal with the five. Nice play fake by Fouts, but he's getting flushed by Solid. He's got to throw it away. That's what Tarek Solid does so well. That came off of a play fake, as you called it, Brad, and Salas saw it very quickly, and he can accelerate. That's why he's led the Big Ten in sacks the past two years. Right side, takes on the block, and all of a sudden he puts his sights on Fouts, and Fouts did a nice job of getting this ball back to where they snapped at the first play and just getting rid of it. He looks a little windy, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah I got to think Mike Fouts is a little winded. He got planted. <laughs> it is third and goal at the five. Is their red zone percentage this year. 25 touchdowns in their 30 successful adventures down in here. They'll work from the shotgun. Empty backfield, third and five. Pops quarterback draw. He's a little guy going down. Wisconsin never bought it. Tom Burke especially. No, really that time. Probably the best pass blocking <laughs> that Mike Fouts had the whole drive because, as you say, the Wisconsin players probably were looking for that play or had a spy guy because the middle of the field looked open. I thought it would work, but they reacted very well. Paul Sefer, who has a school record, 35 career field goals, is going to try to put Utah on the board here from 24 yards away. And he does with three minutes and 53 seconds remaining first quarter from the Copper Bowl, 7-3 Wisconsin. You'll get the best price for $500 in cash. The Morrow Auto Mall offers you nine showrooms so you can shop in comfort. With 2,000 new vehicles available, you can choose from 450 models of cars, trucks, and vans from 12 manufacturers. And you'll get the best price or you'll get $500 in cash. 2,000 new vehicles, a seven-day exchange policy of the best price or $500. But only at the Morrow Auto Mall, I-94 and Highway 50. Have you always wanted an Acura but felt you couldn't afford it? Introducing a brand new Arlington Acura Advantage. Acura preferred pre-owned vehicles. Used Acuras with the benefits of new. Each Acura is rigidly inspected and set to strict Acura standards. Includes Acura Total Luxury Care benefits and a low Arlington Acura price. Bob Roman's Arlington Acura in Palatine, just one block west of Route 53 on Dundee Road. 
idea of a romantic evening, me watching hoops and you keeping quiet. When two biggie schools hold a basketball duel, that's Big Monday. When two big 12 teams meet, it's a college hoop beast you will love. So just pull up some chairs, thank the big guy upstairs, it's not Sunday. Then sit back and relax in your sounds of belts like Big Big Monday. Oh yeah, baby. Sorry, Coach, man. I don't see your name on the list. ESPN's presentation of the Copper Bowl is brought to you by the Grand Canyon State. Come to the one place on earth where you can dream with your eyes wide open. And by Ford and your local Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? Well, I know that his teammates hope that he can come back out, but it doesn't sound like it's good news for Chris Buamatu Mahapala. As Adrian told us during the break, it looks like they're going to bring an ambulance out. They fear that there might be a fracture in that ankle right now. He's in an obvious amount of pain. He's got a sister there with him on the sideline. And his teammates just put together a good-looking drive that did not net them a touchdown, but it got him a field goal. From the three, Aaron Stecker. And he got tapped pretty good by Frank on that kickoff return to the 23. And it looks like we can see at the very end of the play, maybe when the injury occurred, Gary. I think it was Pete Diatolevi, number 39, that makes the play. He's going to fall on him right at the end of the play. There's one hit, run through another tackle. Now watch as he turns around. Chris will pick up his feet, and the number 39 will land on it. His left ankle gets bent on the play. That would be my best guess yeah, of what happened. It looks like it. Wisconsin back on offense on the 23 yard line. First down. There's a little delay counter to Dane, and Dane's into the secondary. And here goes the big fella down the sideline, all the way to the 41 yard line. 37 yards. When you talk to the coaches at Wisconsin, Brad Childress, everyone says the same thing about Ron Dane. He has great patience and number two, great vision and feels the opening. Lusk got caught up in the traffic that time and then he ran. Robert Love, the outstanding outside linebacker, just clipped his heels or Dane might have sent it. Six for 60 at this point already. Because Hayes was on his way to getting a good block on Lawson, the cornerback, who's the last guy that had a chance. So Robert Love just definitely saved the touchdown. Dane left side. Here he goes again. Dane cuts back, and now he's going to take it. The Madison Express touchdown. One big guy goes to the locker room. The other one will head to the sideline with a 40-yard touchdown. Cotton's offensive line that time blocked it brilliantly. And obviously, they've got the guy that take it all the way to the end zone. Not only is he big and tough to bring down, you're worried about him breaking tackles. This time, he didn't have to break any tackles. You're worried about him getting 100? He's got him already. We have 3-11 to go first quarter. Back-to-back -back runs of 37 and then 40 yards. Touchdown, Dane. All for the extra point. Up and good. Really incredible. The other team's Utah's defense is stacked to stop this man. But that's something different. There's Whittingham, Kyle Whittingham. On the end, Aaron Gibson, number 81, just seals his man. Watch comes around, and then there's the great cut that Dane made once he got out to the secondary. And when they say Ron Dane runs smart, he runs with his eyes. This time he cuts back behind Lusk. Remember before, Lusk got caught in traffic, didn't get outside wide enough. So both times, Dane beats the free safety. And Ron does a little incredible. Really incredible. New Jersey high step into the end zone there in the last couple yards. Brad, people are always asking me already, just as a freshman, who you would compare this guy to. I don't know if there is a fair comparison to him as to what he is as a running back. You know, he's just stocky enough to use his weight smartly, and I think he's different than even a Jerome Bettis or a Ironhead. I just really can't think of anyone that matches up to the way he's built and the way he runs. Someday we might be looking at a guy that they say, you know, he runs like Ron Dane. <laughs> I think so. 
100 yards in 12 minutes for Ron Dane. 14-3, Wisconsin. And Hall set the kick. Well, that didn't drive didn't take him long, did it? No. You, you, <laughs> now, how about what Pete Monty said about his teammate? He said, someday I'll be telling my grandchildren that I played with the great Ron Dane. That's from a senior Butkus Award candidate, yeah. one of the best football players I've seen in the Big Ten. Hall will probably knock this thing out of the end zone, or maybe out of the stadium. At least out of the end zone. Touchback. Utah will work from its 20. Ron McBride trying to urge his troops on as they're now down 14 to 3 with their big running back out. Thrifty Car Rental Bowl Week continues tomorrow. It's the Peach Bowl in Atlanta. Raven Priester leads Clemson as they head into the dome against SEC runner-up LSU. Kevin Falk, Rondell Mealy, those guys can put up a few yards as well. That's tomorrow night, 8 o'clock Eastern. The LSU Tigers and the Clemson Tigers. They'll be pawing each other tomorrow night, 8 o'clock Eastern. On ESPN. From the 20. Fox throws it out, incomplete, intended for Omar Bacon, who kind of found himself in a funny position trying to make the catch, trying to turn and catch that ball and run at the same time, and it's incomplete. Yeah, right according to the way we thought this game would go, really. I mean, if Wisconsin is able to run the ball, they're going to run the ball. I mean, sooner or later, later Brad, you're right. They are going to do one of those boomer size and type fakes and yep. let that thing go deep. But if they can keep running it, they're going to do it. And as we take a look at Chris Fumatumafala being taken in the car, he's strapped in. You get a seatbelt on it, Lee. Wow. He's going to go get that baby up there. I can guarantee you they got that seat all the way back, too. <laughs> That's second and ten. Rifles it out. Got it out there in a hurry to Rocky Henry, who dives trying to get the first down. It came up a yard short. When you say rocket it out there, I mean, you're exactly right about the way Mike Fouts throws the football. He is not a big guy. Maybe 170 pounds, maybe 5 foot 10 inches tall, but he has tremendous rotation the upper body he kind of delays that arm back almost like a tennis serve and he just rips it through there he has got a real strong arm actually it's not it's more than an arm he uses his whole body he yep. whips it in there three minutes left in the quarter third down and one they need this first down and they get that first down as Juan Johnson takes it off the left side picks it up <laughs> And they'll move the sticks. Mike Fouts, and I think everybody in the world knows, if you've ever, if you've never seen a Utah football game, maybe you don't know, is the nephew of Dan Fouts, an old friend of ours, and an NFL Hall of Famer, and former great with the San Diego Chargers. He is one of the guys I really can't stand, is Dan Fouts. <laughs> I never won a game again. I, I must have played him ten times. Never won one game. The guy could beat us every time. Well, I used to do ball games with him, as a matter of fact. I just keep rotating my quarterback. That's all I do. <laughs> First down from the 31. And a little opening for Johnson's close by Monty as he got four out to the 34. Pete Monty helps up the guy he just took down. Monty came into this one with 165 tackles and 438 on his career. Now, he's added to that total already tonight. He'll probably end up being Wisconsin's all-time leading tackler because he only trailed Tim Crumrive by about six stops, and he's not very far behind Gary Casper. He needed nine to pass him. So we're going to probably see this guy tonight become the Badgers' all-time leading tackler. And it couldn't happen to a better guy and a more intense football player. We've seen him a long time playing that middle spot. Senior out of Fort Collins, Colorado. And his coach, Barry Alvarez, who has coached a lot of linebackers in his day, remember he was a defensive coordinator for years at Notre Dame and all around the conference, said he is the best linebacker I've ever coached, and that really says enough. And, you know, had Wisconsin been a Rose Bowl team, he could have been the Pat Fitzgerald of the right. Big Ten. I mean, this right. is, that's the type of player he is. Monday, we'll see the Butkus Award winner when we get out to San Diego for the Holiday Bowl. Matt Russell, Colorado. Here's Johnson left side, and Juan's got something working. 
He goes down on the back of his wide receiver's angle. I hope Kevin Dyson can get up. Yeah, Hold on. He is rolling around, and that's what happens. You fall on those ankles. Oh, Ooh, that was just nice one of those. Nice spring, Kevin. <laughs> that was one of those put the camera on me injuries, and then you trot off. Yep. He's trotting a little slower than normal, maybe. We check in with Adrian. Well, guys, with Ma'afala out of this game now, probably for the duration, the pressure has really gone now to the offensive line of the Utah Utes. McBride said, look, you guys, totally different style of runner in Juan Johnson, although they played in the same backfield. But when Ma'afala carries the ball, he blocks as much as he carries. So you guys got to sustain your blocks now all the way downfield. Give Johnson the opportunity to make a decision which way he's going to run. I think this forces Utah into the game plan, Gary, that you and I think they've got to utilize to win the game anyway. That is play action and throw it. The you that have to keep making those defensive backs for Wisconsin play pass first and not crowd the line of scrimmage. Kevin Cosgrove, the defensive coordinator for Wisconsin, has made a commitment when he took over the defensive coordinator job to move up as many guys as he had to to stop the run in the Big Ten. Well, this isn't the Big Ten right now, and he knows that. But when he told us yesterday, he said, you know, Gary, Brad, we played some pretty good receivers in the Big Ten in the last few years. I don't think we're going to see anybody on this field that we haven't played against before. Once you've seen the Joey Galloways and the Terry Glens and the Mercury Hayes yeah. and all those guys, uh, there's some pretty good ones that have come down the pipe. They're going to yeah. measure this one. Now, there's two sides of that story, though. Those guys have all made a lot of yards against them. <laughs> well, it could be, too. <laughs> <laughs> At least you're not shocked. Right. <laughs> I've seen them do that before. Yeah. Coach, he ran by me just like Terry Glenn. He reminds me a lot of them. You know? <laughs> From behind, they look the same. Coach. Right. Yeah, the <laughs> bottom of your feet, maybe. Oh. It has been a year to remember for the Badgers, has it? Has it ever. Wow. And you got to give a lot of credit to the seniors and this coaching staff for taking four straight losses and then turning it into a bowl game. They turned the ball over to Ron Dane. They turned the ball over to their senior leadership and said, we're going to win seven games one way or another, and they did it. First of ten. As Utah, by the length of the football, got the first down for the Wisconsin 46-yard line. Johnson, nice opening off the left side again. And inside the 40, he goes. He's got seven before Adamov can make the stop from the secondary. Yeah, people, we, we built up uh, Chris Fahamatumafala a lot, but Ron Johnson is a good running back. And if, uh, you know, Chris can run those types of yards. I think Johnson and Omar Bacon, who's in the game now, a guy who they had the red shirt, uh, come off of a red shirt this year, uh, is going to have to play as, boy, now we watch Johnson. Johnson's run. limping a little bit. Well, here's the guy he was talking about. Now it's Bacon's turn. The plan was to redshirt Bacon, but with the injury to Chris Malfallon, they had to call on him and he responded. Second to three, Fox lost one for his tight end and just missed him. Dirk Christofferson stretched those arms out on that frame of his, and it was not quite enough. They seem to have a matchup to that side with the tight end. Lysick is up against uh, Christofferson there, and they seem they're just going to swing him out to the outside right here. They've got the guy they want, Lysick on him. But, you know, when you're running and you got your hand stuck up in the air, that slows you down. You know, if that was a good technique, you'd see all the sprinters running that way with one arm up in the air. Michael Johnson with his hands in the air. I used to tell the guys, you know, I don't see you any better with your hand up in the air. <laughs> Just run. Third down, a long three. There's the huge play selection so far. They've mixed it up very well. Wisconsin comes with a blitz. Looks like it's going to be enough for a first down. A tough run by Bacon. And Tom Burke made the stop, but I think Omar picked it up by a half a yard again. Brad, you said we both would like to see Utah co to continue to air out their passing game, and I think that's right. But I also think it's right to not give up completely just because you lost your feature back on the run game. If you want to make Sala, Jurowitz, and those guys really effective pass rushers, just throw the ball. They'll be coming all yeah, night. Yeah, they'll be there for you. So I like the game plan so far that Freddie Gaze, is he pointing to the clock, that means the quarter's going to end. And they're going to say, let's talk this over and see where we are. Ron Dane with 100 yards and a touchdown. Mike Samuel has scored one for Wisconsin. 14-3, to they lead Utah at the end of one. What's up is... It's the wide open spaces of the world's only standard third door. What tough does. What tough is. It's the biggest box in the highest maximum VA payload. 
what chalk does. Chuck is what Tuck does. The new Ford F-150, Motor Trend Truck of the Year, built for Tuck. Can you tell which man is at home and which is in a residence inn hotel room? Honey, can you take out the garbage? That was a hint. Residence Inn by Marriott. The next best thing to home. If you want more computer for your money, you gotta call us. The friendly folks at Gateway 2000. Call me back up. Pick up the phone and give us a call. Call now. Call now. Call now. I'm kinda nervous. Call now. Grab the phone. Give us a call. Pick up. Dial, dial. Dial. <laughs> dial. Man. Gateway computers feature the Intel Pentium processor. So call 1-800-GATEWAY and ask for our free video. Call us today. Okay, now don't get Grandma too excited. That's right, the poor deer is probably a bit weak. She has been running on the same Paracel battery since the Ice Age. <laughs> <laughs> The copper top. No battery is stronger, longer. U.S. gold medalist Mia Hamm spends 90 minutes destroying her hair and 90 seconds bringing it back with Per Plus. More than a shampoo, it conditions too. How? As you shampoo, the conditioner stays suspended. As you rinse, the conditioners go to work, giving you great hair simply. Perfect for Mia, because she wants great hair, but she'd rather be living in it than working on it. Wouldn't you? Perk Plus. Simply great hair. Simply. Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, and Adrian Karsten from Tucson, Arizona Stadium, side of the Copper Bowl, where Wisconsin leads 14-3 as we start the second quarter. But Utah's got a little drive working again. The ninth play of the drive that has them at the Wisconsin 35-yard line. First down. Keyhan in motion. Bounce to the blitz. And it's the wide out screen to Keyhan, and he's got a big game. Down inside the 20. That is really an incredible play that college football has that pro football doesn't. If you throw the ball behind the line of scrimmage, your lineman can go downfield early. And they, Utah has nine different screens in the game plan, and they take advantage of it as those offensive linemen, they're down there. They've got a convoy, three of them downfield. When Keyhan takes the ball, it's like a jailbreak, and yep. it's really what they call it. Jailbreak screen. You got it. And those guys, those linemen especially, Davis has been down there number 70 all day long. They really know how to work that thing. They've got it inside the 20. Last time they came away with only a field goal when they got down to the 5. First down here at the Wisconsin 17. Henry inside the 15. He got about three before they push him back. Juan Johnson, who we will see a lot of tonight. You just joined us. Chris Kulmatumafala, the big 280-pound bruiser for Utah, has left the stadium on his way to the hospital for x-rays on what they think is a fractured left ankle. Well, let, let's hope not. Let's see if he can get in there. Here's the matchup that I think Utah is looking at. Here's Lysak right here inside of the tight end for stops, and they're swinging him out to the outside, and they think they've got a place to throw the football. There it is. There it goes. Could have been a touchdown. Should have been a touchdown. It's really obvious when you stand up here. That, that is a ball that should have been. Did you see Fouts turn around and look in the lights? Did you say, like, what, did a bug get in your eye? Yeah. Or were there lights there? I mean, that, that's catchable that, football. That time it wasn't too high for Christofferson. He just didn't handle it. And Lysak is 6'2", but he's got an inside technique, and they're just swinging him to the outside. Now, this is like a fade to your tight end against a linebacker who's not used to doing it. Now, unfortunately, either is your tight end used to doing that. So you've got a problem, but that's there all day. And maybe he did look into that bank of lights. I don't know, because it went right between his hands. Now from the spread, it's third and seven. Fouts trying to show the screen, and it's intercepted by Sorrell Weems down the sideline. Fouts to beat, and he does. Sorrell Weems, will he take it? 
Yes, he will. Touchdown, Wisconsin. for the touchdown 82 yards later. John Hall for the extra point. Wisconsin 21. Utah 3. The golden age of small business has arrived and with it the gold corporate Optima card new from American Express. It allows you to extend payments to manage your cash flow with a low introductory APR of 8.9% and a credit line of up to $20,000, all with no annual fee. It's the perfect match for today's small businesses. The Gold Corporate Optima Card for the golden road to your success. you buy Saturn, a different kind of company, a different kind of car, and buy Thrifty Car Rental. Great cars in over 50 countries around the world. Best of all, it's Thrifty. A Copper Bowl record, 82-yard interception return for a touchdown by Sorrell Weems. Wisconsin, baby! And Tarek Sala, we're going to give him even more points. Well, what, what did we do? We gave him four points, right. but upon further review... Sala is going to do two things on this thing. Not only does he knock the ball down right there, but then he says, I'm not done playing. I'm going to go get the block to spring him. Bettinger might have been the only guy that had the speed to catch Wing. is what we're saying. Absolutely. We're going to give him. We can't give him six, so we got to give him five points on that deal. Here's a kick. Dyson will field a yard deep and bring it out. Then at the 20, bounces off and gets to the 25. And let's check in with Adrian. Oh, Brad, Gary, how about one more point? Make it an even six for a big hug from Lamar Campbell, the defensive back. Remember the point I made moments after kickoff? Salah, Jerwitz up front. We're going to have to keep the pressure off the defensive backfield. Mark Campbell comes up, gives Salah a big hug. Thank you. Thank you for <laughs> making us look good. Keep going. We can't give him all the points. Sorrell won 82 yards. That's right. Sorrell gets one point. That's all. Five is as much as I can give on that one. <laughs> you guys are a rough crowd, boy. You're hard to please. Well, it keeps staying on the bench, I guess, right? Just kind of one way or another. Look at that time of possession. How deceiving is that? 30 plays for the year. Bounce, rifles to Dyson. Whoa, did that thing get there in a hurry? Out near the 40-yard line, first down. Yeah, because Jason Suttle was there just as Dyson caught that ball. Mike wow. Fouts might not be little, but watch this football. That's right. He zips it in there. Watch the rotation. He just snaps that left side away, and that thing just zipped in there. And that was the proverbial frozen rope right <laughs> yeah, there. Was. Mike said, when I was a kid, I pretended I was my uncle. And all my friends were like John Jefferson and Charlie Joyner and <laughs> Kellen Winslow. I don't know what his buddies are doing now, but he's still throwing the football. Juan Johnson out. 
to the 44-yard line where Bob Adamov made the tackle. We'll give him four. And we'll remind you, coming up tomorrow and Sunday, NFL Countdown. Chris Berman, Tom Jackson, Sterling Sharp, Chris Morton, Sim, and the rest of the gang for the first and last word before kickoff. 11.30 a.m. Uh, AM Eastern on Saturday, noontime on Sunday. Then at 7.30, all the highlights, analysis, and insights of the game on NFL primetime. We'll take you all the way through the playoffs and all the way to Super Sunday on ESPN. Juan Johnson got four, second down and six. We've got 12-21 left first half, and it's 21-3, Wisconsin. Johnson tripped up by Monty, or he might have had a big gainer. As it is, he got to the 48, where it's going to bring up third and short. Yeah, Pete Monty is going to fill and read as quick as any linebacker in college football. His eyes are on the remaining back. Watch him fill. He dodges the block, gets right in there, and he made the tackle but was not happy with himself because he didn't face up on him. Just made it with an arm tackle. Still counts. Yep. Good. He was voted the most valuable player by Wisconsin. There's the career tackle chart. Now that has changed that 438. He's been in on a lot of stops tonight. And we'll track that for you because Crum Ryan Casper are going to lose those two spots very soon. They're going to be forced to punt the ball. You run an I formation isolation play against this Wisconsin defense, you're going to have to handle Neil McClusick in the middle and Tarek Salah, Tarek Salah coming around the outside. And I'll tell you, they just punched that play that time. Yep. And they're going to be forced, I, I just got to believe they're going to be forced to punt the football here. Those are long yards. They lost two yards on that play. Yeah, Ron McBride sends out Hunter. Shank the first one. An 18-yard kick the first time he got out there. Set the kick away. Aaron Stecker, who took one 63 for a touchdown against Hawaii in the season finale. Wisconsin has kept their defense in the game. They are playing it as a, a punt fake play. They're yes, going to they force are. Utah to punt the ball. Fourth down and three. Oh, Hunter hit this one a mile in the air. Stecker has to get out of the way. This might be a great kick, as it will be fielded inside the 10. Nice job by the Utah special teams, and Hunter makes up for his first punt with a beauty there. But still, the Utes are down 21 to three. More and more travelers are finding savings out of the blue. An alliance between Western Pacific Airlines and Thrifty Car Rental brings more of what travelers want above all, low rates. Proving that Thrifty and Western Pacific are birds of a feather. For car rental reservations, call your professional travel agent or 1-800-4-CARS. It's reliable and easy, and best of all, it's thrifty. The prices were unbelievably low. I can't believe it. Now Red Lobster has 15 dinners under $10. Enjoy favorites like Scampi, Crab Alfredo, or new tastes like Jambalaya. Fifteen dinners under $10 at Red Lobster now. A lot of food, little money. The Adventure Discovered Sweepstakes. I've been shopping. It's all right here on my Discover Card statement. Use your Discover Card and you could win everything on Boyd Matson's statement and join him on a National Geographic filming expedition. It pays to discover. yesterday that they were in for a handful. They gave up 376 yards rushing to BYU, and he said, these guys are better blockers. Yeah. That was the one that said our goal was to keep Dane to seven yards or less on each carry. He's already got one for 37 and one for 40 the last time Wisconsin had it on offense. Armin Boglin in on the stop there as Dane gets short yardage. Worst starting field position, obviously, here for Wisconsin as that punt was a good one and 
put them inside their own tent. Yeah, I think when, when you're Wisconsin at this point, the way you've been able to run the ball, you just look at that as an opportunity to gain 91 yards. They got the guy they call Gibby in there now playing one of the tight end spots, and he is the biggest player in college football, wearing a number 81 at tight end, Aaron Gibson. And with the banquets out here, they say he's in the vicinity of 380, Brad Childress told us. He said you have to estimate at this point of the season. Dane up the middle, trying to bounce it outside, but a nice job by Utah and Harold Lusk, who came up from his safety spot and filled in a hurry. And a short gain again. It'll bring up third down and a long three. We got a flag on the far side of the field. Wisconsin says it's against Utah. Let's see about that. Bill Richardson is our referee tonight. First penalty we've had, isn't it? Seems as I remember. Number 46 lined up in the neutral zone. The five-yard penalty results in a first down. Chris Godfrey, the outside linebacker, got up too close, apparently, in the neutral zone. An automatic first down. There's Brad Childress in the middle. Mike Cassidy to his right, our left, who is going to be leaving Wisconsin, and on to Baylor. On to Baylor, defensive coordinator, assistant head coach, including Dave Campbell, new coach at uh, Baylor, left from uh, Notre Dame. At the 20, first down by penalty. Now Gibson's lined up on the left side. And Lyles, the tight end, will go in motion from that spot. They'll play fake it. Samuel on the bootleg again, and again he'll run, but this time he's not going for a touchdown. He's going down. Chad Kahaha had that one red. Chad got out there. He had a good game. One of the only guys that had a good game when we saw him against BYU. When we talk about Harold Lust's read from the safety position, what you'll see is the Wisconsin lineman pulling very strongly on this play. They almost over-exaggerated, and that's what Lusk is looking for to read his key, and he did a good job this time, is he is right on coverage right here and forced Samuel to run the ball and get next to nothing on the play. That's the challenge. All night, Lusk is going to have to read very quickly, is it a run or is it a play-action pass? Well, they had about 2,000 pounds going left. It's going left, Jack. <laughs> and Dane, this time, does come left. And Ron goes out across the 30. He's got another first down out near the 32-yard line. Oglin and Love, two linebackers, make the stop. This line for Wisconsin are all seniors, except for left tackle Chris McIntosh, number 75. And that time, McIntosh just pinned his man down that time, allowing Dane and Lyles to get around the corner. You got Wunsch and McIntosh, a freshman, and next year moving Gibson over to that right. tackle spot. You got a pair of bookend tackles. You know, but he now averages 350. One guy 400, the other That's guy 350. Right. <laughs> That's the other thing Jerry Wunsch said, who's an all-Big Ten guy and who's a senior. He said, you know, when we leave, they're not getting any smaller behind us. Dane up the middle. That time found himself an opening. Good blocking, just split the seam of the middle of the hash marks, and he goes seven yards out to the 39-yard line. You know, Coach McBride and Kyle Whittingham told us that this game is about manhood, and we have to show that we're men enough to stop this, ring, this running game. Well, sometimes you can be all the man you want. You can try as hard as you want. You may just get outmatched. There may be nothing you can do about it. You know, it's like trying to juggle six balls at one time. You just can't physically do anything about it. Those are huge things you're trying to juggle on that front wall for Wisconsin. Second down and three. Dane, this time, well, he bounces underneath the pile and got more yardage than I thought he was going to get. Kaunu'u was the guy, along with Kafusi, who made first contact, and then Dane just kind of bounced out there, and he's about a yard short. The thing that Utah has to realize with this Wisconsin running game is that they have to stay solid. The defensive line has to form up with their man, not get their shoulders turned sideways because Dane will find the crack. And for the most part, except for those two long runs, they have been doing a good job on it. Wisconsin just doesn't give up on the run game. They just keep pouring it in there. Seems academic who's going to get the football here on third and one. Dane, first down. And runs out to the 45-yard line. Needed one, and he got four. Aaron Gibson, the big tight end who started out the year as a tackle, Barry Alvarez told us, is getting better at tight end. He's getting used to playing that wide spot and blocking. 
This time he's matched up with Chris Gottfried and does a nice job of moving those feet. That guy's close to 400 pounds, and look how he moves his feet that time around the outside to make that block. You know, Gottfried looked like a guy that was going up against a garage that didn't have any windows. He couldn't even see around Absolutely. there. Absolutely, and Gottfried is 6'2", 240. <laughs> there it is again. There's the matchup. First down. Dane again left. Cuts outside into Utah territory at the 49, and it was Godfrey who hung on there to make the stop. Now last time, Aaron Gibson again stalked around to the outside. This time, Gibson, number 81, I don't have to circle him, he's in the whole screen right there. He's just going <laughs> to block down and to turn the lights out, and they're around the outside. The only reason he almost loses his block is he gets pushed out the block that time by Manny, Manny Castro coming around. What a weapon. The only people that I've seen, Brad, that really handled this blocking all day was Iowa. For some reason, yeah. in that Iowa game that we did, the Wisconsin offensive line could not push that Iowa defense off the edge. And Utah's about the same size up front, you know, so it can be done. And zero passing yards for there, Wisconsin. There's that big set of zero. And you know what? What's more important than zero? Up here, 21 to three. <laughs> Eight play of the drive coming up. Six of the seven on this drive has been Ron Dane. The other one was the bootleg scramble by Samuel. So all runs again. So far, they're thinking about an end around. They play fake it. And now they're going downtown for Hayes. And it's broken up. Samuel didn't get enough on it. Hayes outran that pass. Nice coverage. Dave Richards back there to break it up. Brad, I don't think Hayes gave Samuel enough time to do everything he had to do take two times both the tailback and the reverse and then throw the ball watch the two fakes he has to make he fakes the ball to mccullough and then he's got the wide receiver coming around now once he turns around hayes is already down there 40 yards you'll see the ball he doesn't have enough arm to throw the ball that far if hayes would have been more patient with that play it could have worked mike samuel for three passing but he does have a touchdown run Back to the run they go. McCullough is near the 45-yard line as we check in with Adrian. Well, Brad, you and Gary remember that Iowa game that you bring up. They went into that game thinking with more movement on the defensive line up front, they could confuse Wisconsin. Well, that's been the conversation on the Utah sideline here. But I hear the Wisconsin guys say, well, this is just like our scout team. I mean, there's, there's no challenge for these guys up front right now, and all the movement in the world is, is not going to be 30 pounds across the line. Yeah, 40, actually. 309 to 269. Those guys are doing what they can. Fourth down and short. Dane, first down. Went off the left side, got about three. Tawali Alave, the inside linebacker, made the stop. This guy gets better as the game goes along. That's the bad news when you're playing defense. That is the amazing thing about Ron Dane. Remember, this guy was playing high school football a year ago. I remember when the freshman rule was put in, everyone who knew everything about football said, well, the kids won't be mature enough to play. <laughs> this guy is looking pretty mature. He carries the ball 40 times a game. <laughs> He had 1,785 yards as a high school senior and had more than that as a freshman. And here's the fullback. Cecil Martin very rarely carries, and he's going to use that for all it's worth. They got about nine. Had to laugh yesterday when we talked to Brad Childress. He said things were going so well against Hawaii, we, we thought we'd give it to the fullback. Even Big Cyril got a few carries. What must you be thinking if you're a defensive coach or a defensive football player for Utah right now? Probably every call that Kyle Whittingham has had in the book he's called, every technique they've used, and so far nothing has worked. They started off the game with a couple of tackles, but nothing he's been able to pull out has been able to work against this team. He needs a defensive line that his dad coaches with the Raiders. Right. Samuel, play action, pump fakes. And does throw, and there's a completion. And a first down catch to Donald Hayes. First passing yards of the ball game for Wisconsin comes with 431 left in the half. Yeah, and look where that call was made. Second and less than the yard. They say, well, you know what? We gave it to the fullback once. Why don't we let Samuel throw one once, too? This is a bowl game. You know, he's had a nice year. <laughs> if they hadn't made it, they would have had two opportunities to run the ball. 
We saw probably the best play fake pass we saw all year was Mike Samuel against Purdue as he tucked it behind his hip and went to Tony Simmons for a touchdown. And that's something you can do when you got a bruiser behind you that you give it to 50 times a game. James. Got about three. And Ron Dane in the second drive of this ball game. He was the drive. Took off. This is first down. Little delay. Cut outside. Goes 37 yards. And Robert Love saves the touchdown right there. Right. And then he saved it for one play. Yeah. Then it's 40 yards with a cutback run and a little high step at the five. Two plays, 77 yards, a touchdown. And there's a man that was 260 pounds running away from Clarence Lawson, number 20 on that play, who's the cornerback for the other team. There's the numbers on Dane so far, 9.3 a pop. He gets it on a little draw play here. He's wrapped up pretty well by Ryan Aquina. If you're just joining us, don't forget Ron Dane's counterpart on the Utah side, Chris Buamatu Mahapala. They're 280 pounds, tailback left the stadium for x-rays on his left ankle and he was just short of a thousand yard season having missed three games with a bad knee and we just saw him come back against byu he said he was a little rusty and a little scared about his knee and he was feeling so good yesterday he said this is the best i've felt all season long now with the time off to give the knee a little bit more chance to get ready for the bowl game and then the ankle goes on third down and six Samuel, plenty of time to pass, and now scrambles around and gets put down at the 20-yard line. So it's going to be John Hall to come in with the field goal unit for Wisconsin as Utah holds. Yeah, and Utah held that time because of great coverage from their defensive secondary. Remember, not you know Wisconsin is the last-rated pass offense in the Big Ten, and Utah, when you play in the WAC, you have to play good pass coverage. They match up well there, and they force Samuel to just eat the ball wisely. Eat the ball right. and with an opportunity to kill John Hall, number three in all-time record books at Wisconsin, and field goals made. He'll try one from 38 yards, and he got it. So with 2:02 remaining in the half. John Hall adds to the Wisconsin lead. They lead 24 to 3. If the mere thought of buying a used car makes you tense up, perhaps the following few words will help you relax a little. Extensive 150-point inspection, limited warranty, thoroughly cleaned inside and out, three-day money-back guarantee, reconditioned, complete oil and filter change, 30-day 1,500-mile trade-in policy, pressure-free shopping, one-price policy, plus our great Saturn of Libertyville family. Saturn of Libertyville, a member of the Bob Rorman Auto Group. Hope to see you soon. When you dream of a car, what do you dream? I dream of Mitsubishi. You know, a Galat for the family, an Eclipse for me. So you dream of Bob Rorman? Well, not Bob exactly, but Bob Rorman's Libertyville Mitsubishi. Buy a new Mitsubishi Galat for only $14,995 or an Eclipse for only $11,995. There's only one, Bob Rorman. Make your dream a reality at the Bob Rorman Libertyville Mitsubishi, 1119 South Milwaukee Avenue, Libertyville. Lucky. Your worst day is never this bad. The Avalanche and the Blackhawks, Tuesday at 8.30. ESPN2, lucky you. Presenting a space-age innovation in televised college basketball. It's called ESPN Full Court. It gives you tons of great college hoops action you couldn't get otherwise. Call your cable operator or direct TV for ESPN Full Court. Your fans have had a lot to cheer about. 202 left in the half. They lead by 21. Scoring drive for Wisconsin capped by the 38-yard John Hall field goal, but Ron Dane, most of it, 40 of the 71. He's had another big half. And a half and two minutes yet to come. Hall to kick. Last time Dyson was able to return it. This time, the cameraman's going to return this one. Gonna... I don't even know if he's got a play on it. Yeah, just, just over his eye, right there. That was the best chance on it with our cameraman. <laughs> Halftime a couple of minutes away, and right now, let's check in with Chris Fowler with a preview. Chris? 
Yeah, greetings from the Crescent City. We'll talk about the Sugar Bowl arrivals as Lee and Kirk join me. Also, a report from the Rose Bowl where the weather problems are affecting the preparation. And our Blitzers will join us for a look at four other bowl games. All that coming up at halftime from New Orleans and Pasadena. Stick around. All right, Chris, thanks. We have two minutes, two seconds remaining. She's head down in full force here in the Great Southwest. Their team up 24 to 3. Bounce empty backfield from the gun with the four wide receivers. Mike throws on the run. And, oh, nice catch. Yeah. <laughs> Throw catch right there. That was as good as you could do. That was good coverage that time. Donnie Utu made the grab. Mike Fouts has to be very careful right here. A, a turnover at this point down at where they are right now, 24 to 3, would just be the end of the football game. Second down and three down the middle, and it's intercepted. It's exactly what Gary was talking about. Pete Monty, the linebacker, down the sideline. Monty lost the handle and didn't quite get there. He stepped out on the 13 yard line, but Mike Fouts tried to stuff something in there that he had no business doing. Pete Monty's been in this league a long time in college football, and he played it perfectly. 24 yard return for Monty. If anything in that situation, that ball should be thrown to the outside where you have one-on-one -on -one coverage and you feel real good about it. Inside, Monty knows as he throws his balls, he's got help deep and he can cut underneath it. Makes the catch. You know Monty was probably a high school football player, even changed arms. Fullback, you mean. You bet, high school fullback as a football player, and he stepped out right on the 12-yard line. No, Wisconsin with a late Christmas gift from Monty. They already had one from Sorrell Weems, who took his to the end zone. Monty almost did, but stepped out of bounds, and now it's back to Dane, the big fella. Burrows his way down to the five-yard line. Second down and three there. And just moments ago, we were talking about the fact that this game could easily be 17 to 10. Had Christofferson, the tight end, not dropped the ball that Fouts threw him on one end. One play later, Weems went 82 the other way. And you look at the scoreboard, 24 to 3, and about to get worse if you're a Utah fan. Gibson in there, the extra tight end. Dane follows his blockers, runs into one of them, and goes out of bounds. It looks like even a little bit shy of the first down stick, which is at the two yard line. I don't know if I'd get cued here and run wide. I think I'd go boom up the middle and see what happens. I mean, it's, it, you know, I mean, any run play that it goes anywhere near, you know, either side of these tackles looks to be a mismatch against this team. And you saw a, a shot just a minute ago. Rod McBride was just encouraging his defense, whatever they can, let's get a stop. Let's make them kick, kick a field goal. Anything, they have to get a stop. And, and Wisconsin has the ability, I think, to get a first down here without yes, a touchdown. Third down, a yard for the first. About three yards for the touchdown. 46 seconds left in the half. Martin that time, the blocking back, did a perfect job of taking the end man on the line of scrimmage, took his legs out from under him, and that means Dane just walks into the end zone. What a nice job, well coached play this time, and this went wide, and there was nothing the youths could do about it. Cecil Martin right here is going to come outside. Now watch how he takes the legs away right there. Great block. That is the block, and then you come right in here. You're 260 pounds, and that's as easy as it goes. Lusk, you're not going to do it. Stop a guy 260 on the goal line. Ball puts up point number 31. Two touchdowns Three for Dave. Ball Wisconsin here before halftime. We're working on something up here. I tried three wide rocket. Mm. If they blitz, it won't work. What about a quick slam? Okay, Mike, we're almost there. Come on, come on, come on. Look at pro split Z out. What's taking so long up there? Okay, Mike, here we go. Three wide, 78, Z out, Y cross. All right, all set. Let's go, let's go. Good call, guys. Good job. And if I see fear in a man's eyes, I will say no. I scream, no! 
He tried to stick it in there, and Monty just ran underneath it and made the interception. He's still trying to cool off from that run down to the 12-yard line. And after that, it was three plays for Ron Dane to cap off the scoring drive. Utah's got a couple of timeouts left with 33 seconds remaining in the half. Boy, anything would look good right now, but obviously if you get a touchdown for Utah, that would give them something to hang their hat on going into the locker room. Fred Graves, the offensive coordinator, surrounded himself with his entire offensive unit. Now they'll bring it back out to a first down at the Badger 40. See, now I think you can stick the ball in there because an interception now at this point in the field just does not kill you the way Wisconsin throws the ball. You know, at, at this half of the field, you can now gamble with the ball. When you're on your own half of the field, you have to really make sure. Unless, of course, Weems catches it on the fly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Go, you. I like that Dyson matchup. There's Dyson. He got past the first man, but nice help from the inside from Tarek Sala, who read that one from his defensive end spot, got back to make the tackle. I don't think Wisconsin has anyone that can match up with Dyson on the outside. That means he's going to start forcing coverage to his side, and then Henry and the other players will start getting man-to-man -man coverage out on the other side of the field. 20 seconds left in the half. Utah time to drive down to a late second quarter touchdown. Ever heard the words, no man is an island? That means your actions affect other people. If you use drugs, you don't just bring yourself down. You bring down your family, your friends, your team. What a shame. If you or someone you know needs help or information concerning drug abuse, call this toll-free number, 1-800-662-HELP. This message provided by the NCAA. Enhancing flavor and textural characteristics to alterations of milk, coagulum, firmness adjustment values. Early ultrasound diagnosis of dysplasia and total arthroplasty to treat degenerative diseases of the coccyphemoral joint. 
increasing modulus through machine extrusion of L boron carbide and L aluminum oxide metal matrix composites. neck roll part of the equipment that's that's a neck <laughs> of Eric Gibson <laughs> it works just as well though doesn't it, it does same thing Bounce. deep out almost picked off by Weems yeah it, it was picked off because that ball was thrown way inside that time to Rocky Henry to the outside late again not deep enough and Mike Bounce is struggling with his passing game he's making a lot of good throws but he's making a lot of bad throws and that's hurting his football team right now Got a couple of plays left here before halftime. I think this game really turned on that batted pass by Tarak Sala. Yep. Dyson and Henry, the wideouts. Keehan has joined them. Going to try to throw the quick one out to Henry. And I don't think he got out of bounds. He slipped and went down on a knee on his own. And they're going to have to use their last time up with six seconds left. Well, the, the clock would have stopped after the first down on that play, and they, I guess you might as well use it. You can't use it again, last play. So now what do you do? Do you kick a field goal from this far? Do you throw a jump ball up in the end zone and try to get it? Dyson on a jump ball matched up out there is not a bad play. <laughs> Kevin Cosgrove saying, get back, get back, get back. Actually, Wisconsin saw one of those Hail Marys work against them earlier this year to end the half against UNLV. They gave up a Hail Mary type touchdown in the last play of the second quarter. So they've got a little history on their side negatively in that respect. But this is at the 27 yard line and soon to be the last play of the first half. Coming up tomorrow on ABC Sports, it'll be the NFL wildcard games. Jacksonville will be in Buffalo to take on the Bills. That'll be followed by Minnesota in Dallas to meet the Cowboys at 3.30 Eastern time. It's coming up tomorrow on ABC Sports. Ron Dane, two touchdowns today in the first half. Mike Samuel has one running the football from 38 yards and then Sorrell Weems interception. See, they're not gonna try to kick the field goal, I, I, I don't think, are they in this situation? This, this doesn't make a lot of sense to me. This is like putting the men over when you're down by eight runs. <laughs> Pulsifer going to try one apparently from 44 yards out. Well, he's the school record holder in field goals. He's about ready to add to it, but it got blocked. Almost think it was Sala who got it. Wisconsin stops the last attempt of this half for Utah. They just swallowed that, and I think it was Tarek Sala. At least his teammates are greeting him as such, but with a second left, Wisconsin gets it back. Didn't like that strategy at all. You know, even if they make the thing, it does not look good to them stopping the offense for Wisconsin much. So you gotta get big points. I like my odds on the outside with Dyson much better than a 45-yard field goal in this situation. The ball was I don't know, it wasn't subtle that got it, so it was someone inside, but uh, it stopped very quickly. It was Sala, Tarek Sala. What a game he's having. We've grown up with this guy. Yeah, we have. <laughs> and he's gonna go to the locker room, a huge part of the Wisconsin first half success, and that guy is a big part of it too. Halftime from Tucson, it's 31 to three. Wisconsin leading the Utes as we send it to halftime and down to New Orleans and Chris Fowler. Chris? Fred, thanks very much. Kind of an embarrassing first half for the WAC conference, which complained loudly about a lack of bowl respect being blown out by a Big Ten team that won just three conference games. Lee and Kirk join me from our bowl headquarters across from the Superdome here. We'll talk about clean play with coaches Bowden and Spurrier. The Rose Bowl sloppy weather is the story we'll check in there and also the other sports news from our espn studios all coming up at halftime at the break in tucson it's all badgers 31 3 at halftime plenty more coming up for new orleans pasadena and the studios Another season, another reason for me. 
Just $18.95 a day, you can rent a Dodge Neon or similar compact car from Thrifty. From the worldwide leader in sports, this is ESPN News. Hello, everyone. And welcome to ESPN. I'm Andre Aldridge, along with John Butcher Ross, and we'd like to welcome all of you watching the Copper Bowl on ESPN. This is ESPN News, and we've got more bowls. Absolutely. Of course, Washington doing it against Utah. What's Indeed. going on down in Miami, Andre? Let's check it out. While Florida and Florida State play each other in the Sugar Bowl for the Seminoles, a chance to win the national championship, that other team from the Sunshine State, accustomed to playing in title games and snubbed this year by the Bowl Alliance, finds itself close to home in the CarQuest Bowl against Virginia. So it's safe to assume that motivation could be a problem. Can't we all just get along? A pre-game fight in the CarQuest Bowl. Who would have thought? First quarter, Miami strikes first. Bryant Clement will go up top. Looking for Yatiel Green. 70-yard score, Miami leads 7 to nothing. Later in the first, Virginia's Thomas Jones will get nailed. Here's the handoff. He's nailed. He fumbles it. Picked up by Tremaine Mack, and he's gone. This is Tremaine Mack. Mack goes the distance. Miami leads 14-0 over Virginia. The Cavs have never won in Florida. Second quarter, Miami leading 17-7. Virginia quarterback Tim Sherman picked off again. It's Mack again. He shoots. He scores. 42 yards this time. Miami leads 24-7 at the half. Third quarter, Miami up 10, 24-14. Virginia kicker Rafael Garcia tries the 38-yard field goal. Who else? Mack again with the block. Score remained 24-14. Right now it's Miami by 10 with 4.52 left. 31-21. Again, the Canes have lost three, three straight bowl games since winning the title in 1991. Again, the Cavs have never won in the state of Florida. They're 0-7 entering this contest. The Syracuse Orangemen have one of the top rushing offenses in the nation, with six players averaging more than 20 yards per game on the ground. As for the Houston Cougars defense, well, here's what our press release said. The Houston D was very average this year, which was a positive step up from pathetic. Ouch. The two walking in Memphis tonight, courtesy of the Liberty Bowl. Let's see what happened down in Elvis's home. Houston with high hopes against Syracuse. Second Syracuse offensive play. Malcolm Thomas gets the pitch from Donovan McDab with his personal salute to George Clinton here. The motor booty affair. Motoring down. Can't quite get into the end zone, but McNabb's touchdown made it 7-0. Second quarter, Houston trails 16-7. Antoine Smith gets the pitch, puts on the moves, romps 51 yards, his own self 2-3. That led to a Smith TD. 16-13 cues, but the Syracuse running game would point in the right direction. The reverse to Deion Maddox, and he picks up 14 important yards right there. Their running game was on fire. Fourth quarter, Malcolm Thomas busts the tackles right up the middle. Thomas with 24 carries, a career high, 201 yards. Capping the drive, McNabb, the option keeper for the two-yard touchdown run, finishes the 15-play, nine-minute drive. Syracuse goes on to win 30-17, to their seventh straight bowl win, and they're taking care of some serious business. The Orangemen are indeed. Folks, thanks for joining us. I'm Andre Aldridge, along with John Butcher Gross, and we'll return you to the game of Wisconsin and Utah in just a moment. 
my customers was telling me that he never knew what was going to break next on his car. But at least he knew this. Whatever it was, Napa would have the parts to fix it. Now there's an easier way to buy the parts you need at Napa, the Napa card. An instant line of credit that gives you 90 days same as cash on purchases over $200. Plus it's good at thousands of Napa auto parts stores and Napa auto care centers. The Napa card, another way Napa keeps America running. America runs! No such thing as UFOs. Come on, we might see one. Ah, aliens! Very funny. UFOs. Ah! What? What is it? Oh, my gosh! Don't move. Move? Where would I go? Ah, uh, honey, where's the Ericsson cellular phone? Here, here. Call, 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 call. Hello? Ericsson cellular phones. When life gets a little wild. Um, honey, they want to know where we're calling from. You want a highly reliable Ericsson cellular phone. Welcome back to Bowl Headquarters in New Orleans. Bourbon Street, a little bit wet and deserted for a Friday night. That's the way the coaches like it because, unlike many bowl games, in the Sugar Bowl, the players sometimes get together. There are confrontations in the street. The hotels are very close, and the quarter is where a lot of the players are out the week before the game, although they told us they are going to low-key it tonight. Both teams are now safely in town. Florida had some typical travel woes. Their charter an hour and a half late landing here in New Orleans. Danny Werfel determined not to let the post-Heisman media frenzy get to him as it has to some other winners. He'll be well protected all week. He hopes he'll be well protected in the game. For the Knowles, Gator killer Warwick Dunn, a homecoming for the Louisiana native. You know, the Knowles seem more focused on a national title, not just beating their arch rivals. The fire is already up because it's the national championship. Whoever we play, we're going to be fired up and ready to go because it's for all the marbles. So, I mean, nothing else can get you fired up. I guess we're a little bit like Arizona State. We're just here to play the best game we can. We'll let the national championship, uh, you know, we can't worry about other games or how people vote. All we can concern ourselves with trying to play our best against uh, FSU. Spur making lots of references to hopes for a clean game. That's a reference to the late hits of Florida State put on Danny Werfel in the first meeting. Here's the infamous tape that Spurrier and his staff produced showing some of those late hits that were not called by SEC officials, by the way. Bobby Bowden fears that he's trying to bait the Big 12 crew for this game into calling it very tight. Is it genuine concern or a bit of gamesmanship? Oh, we're just saying that uh, hopefully it's a good, clean, hard-fought game, and hopefully the referees will control it, and hopefully Danny Wolf will be protected by the referees. That's, that's mainly it. And uh, we'll talk about all that other stuff later. That's his job, to try to get the officials involved. So, I mean, I'm just trying to ignore it, just play as hard as I can, and hopefully we can do the same thing we did last time. Steve and I get along good. Uh, I'm anxious to see him, you know, see if he's mad, see if he's mad, you know. We've always gotten along real good together. And uh, uh, I expect it to be the same way. You ain't going to change me. Yeah, you don't want to change no. when you're 13 you know, on your last 14 <laughs> ball games. Lee Corso and Kirk Herbstreet join me. What about the players? It's sometimes tough. We're seeing it with Utah here in the first half to regain what you had in the regular season in a bowl. Yeah, for any bowl game, not just this one here in the Sugar Bowl. It's tough sometimes for the players. You go through your ritual all the entire regular season, 11 straight weeks, Monday through Friday, the preparation, the game on Saturday. You continue to go through this. All of a sudden, you have the month layoff getting ready for the bowl game. It's very tough sometimes for some teams to regain that confidence and that edge. It's going to be interesting in this game to see who gets that back. What about the edge, considering these teams have played previously? It's a rematch, the 11th in history, League. Well, I think Florida offensively underestimated the Florida State pass rush, especially when Werfel was underneath the center. They sacked them six times. So the Gators did a smart thing against Alabama. One week later, they went to the shotgun. They used it 11 times. They had eight passes. They had four touchdowns from it. Wow, 204 yards. Watch Florida to use more shotgun in this game than they did a lot in the first Florida State game. That is amazing. 11 this snaps and four touchdowns for this in the shotgun. <laughs> too shabby. Now, Steve Spurrier made reference to the Rose Bowl in Arizona State. That, of course, is the other half of the championship equation with more on the buildup for that game. Let's go to Pasadena and Mike Adamley. A day not fit for the Pasadena Chamber of Commerce nor the Arizona State football team as rainy conditions forced the Sun Devils indoors. 
Friday's practice session held inside that ballroom. Actually, practice conditions a concern for both coaches. We're a little late getting out here, and uh, we fly over a lot of a lot of grass practice fields coming up here. And unfortunately, the one we're practicing on is, is mud right now. There's no there's no grass on this field. I thought every every practice field in California had a lot of good grass on it, but that's not the, that's not the case. Ohio State's Friday practice session was conducted in the mud and closed to the media. But on Thursday, it was apparent that their field in Orange County was less than plush. Arizona State's players tried to make the most of their indoor walkthrough on Friday, while both coaches try to put a positive spin on the negative weather conditions. I think there's an accumulative uh, fatigue factor that builds up on your players. Uh, I think they tend to stay out a little bit later than normal. They go to all these things during the day. All of a sudden, you get yourself a, a tired team with tired legs. I think this might, might prove really to be uh, the right thing for us. It might help us both to rest our football team a little, a little more than we normally would. Uh, it'll give us a little more meeting time, a little more mental preparation. Uh, uh, the good thing about it is neither team has an advantage. It is expected to rain through the weekend here in Pasadena, and if that's the case, Coach Bruce Snyder and his staff said that they may have to look for an alternative practice site. Just another distraction in a week chock full of them. With the Sun Devils in Pasadena, Mike Adamley, ESPN. Thanks, Mike. I think the coaches here would like rain all week long. I'm going to keep those guys inside the hotel. from the trouble. Let's take a look at the championship what-ifs, because the picture is a little bit cloudy and could end in controversy. Florida State wins this game here. Pretty clear they're going to be the national champions. They have all but five of the first-place votes in each poll. Now, if Arizona State wins the Rose Bowl and Florida wins the Sugar Bowl, Sun Devils is the only unbeaten, seen the logical choice. But what if both favorites win? What if Florida wins the Sugar Bowl, Ohio State wins the Rose Bowl, there'll be no undefeated teams left. Right now, Florida does have that 85-point edge in the AP poll, 70 points in the coaches' poll. Yeah, but Chris, Ohio State could say very easily, heck, we beat Notre Dame, we beat Penn State, we beat Arizona State, why don't we deserve a piece of that national championship? When you lost one ball game, they got a point. Well, I think Ohio State fans have a great point with that, but you also have to look at Florida. If you look at the two losses for both teams, Ohio State lost to Michigan at home. Michigan was number 18 in the country. Florida lost to Florida State on the road by three points, and they were the number two team in the country. That has to favor the Florida Gators. Plus, the game is on January 2nd, when all eyes will be on the Sugar Bowl. It'll be interesting to see yep. if the two favorites would remember. That's the two, two favorites. favorites. No unbeatens, controversy. Yep. Perhaps <laughs> typical. <laughs> Not a clean ending to the typical. season. Typical playoff. <laughs> no. Right now at halftime of the Copper Bowl, Wisconsin and Big Ron Dane all over Utah 31-3. When we come back at halftime, the Blitzers will join us. We'll look at four more bowl games in this busy bowl season as we continue from New Orleans. You'll get the best price for $500 in cash. The Morrow Auto Mall offers you nine showrooms so you can shop in comfort. With 2,000 new vehicles available, you can choose from 450 models of cars, trucks, and vans from 12 manufacturers. And you'll get the best price or you'll get $500 in cash. 2,000 new vehicles, a seven-day exchange policy of the best price or $500. But only at the Morrow Auto Mall, I-84 and Highway 50. At Arlington Lexus and Palatine, we want you to enjoy the fruits of your labor without giving up a lot of lettuce. Bob Roman's Arlington Lexus and Palatine. Always light in price and heavy in service. At Arlington Lexus and Palatine, the only time you'll get soaked is when you take advantage of our complimentary car washes. Bob Roman's Arlington Lexus and Palatine. Always light in price and heavy in service. Welcome back to New Orleans, the Superdome. It's hosted Bob Hope, the Pope, the Rolling Stones, lots of great sporting events over the years. Seven national champions crowned under that roof. We've talked about the Sugar Bowl and the Rose Bowl a bit. Plenty of other bowl games to talk about. Our Blitzers are along for their traditional spot, and in his traditional leadoff position, here's Ivan Mazel. The West Virginia defense will look familiar to North Carolina fans. The Mountaineers used the same scheme that took the Carolina Panthers to the NFC West title. West Virginia will show as many as seven fronts, so the key to the Gator Bowl is how well the Tar Heels recognize what's coming. One problem? Sophomore Oscar Davenport is making his first start at quarterback for the injured Chris Keldorf. Bigger problem? Behind Davenport, all Carolina has at quarterback is wide receiver Jason Peace and a freshman, Kevin Carty, who Mac Brown wants to redshirt. The Tar Heels defense is every bit as good as the Mountaineers, which is a good thing now that tailback Amos Zaraway is healthy again. 
North Carolina is better. As long as the Heels quit moping about the Virginia loss, they'll win. The Bowl Blitz continues with Tony Barnhart. The words must win and Independence Bowl don't usually go together. The losses at the end of the season to Georgia and Alabama have put the heat on Auburn's Terry Bout. Auburn hasn't lost three straight since 1981, Pat Dye's first year as coach. Now, Army's first 10-win team, they're a little scary. With Ronnie Magata running the wishbone, the cadets led the nation in rushing. That could spell trouble for Auburn's young defense, which finished last in the SEC. But the Tigers have the player who makes the difference. Against Syracuse, Army couldn't stop Donovan McNabb. In the Independence Bowl, they won't stop Damian Craig. Auburn wins its first bowl under Bowden, who should have a happier new year. And now the bowl blitz continues with Gary Daniels. The Colorado-Washington matchup features two teams, no doubt, that could beat anybody in any bowl game. And they're going to be ready to play because San Diego is an area rich for both schools for future recruits. Washington's defense must disrupt Coy Detmer's timing with his powerful passing game. They're not going to have the benefit of the weather like Nebraska did when they got by the Buffs. Colorado's defense will face one of the best balanced offenses the Huskies have had in years. Two reasons. One, sensational running back Corey Dillon will show the casual football fan he is truly one of the country's best. And two, freshman quarterback Brock Heward has emerged into a future star. I see this game going right down to the wire. And in this case, I'll take the senior quarterback. The Bull Blitz now continues with Gene Wojciechowski. The way Hayden Fry tells it, Iowa couldn't win the state 3A championship, much less the Alamo Bowl. But don't believe a word of it. Texas Tech has the amazing Byron Hansbard, but their already depleted offensive line just lost right tackle Lynn Schurler, who's out after knee surgery. Plus, the Hawkeyes have a history of shutting down big-time running backs. Already this season, they faced four of the top 11 and seven of the top 19 rushers in the country. All but one of those guys were held below their season average, and Iowa won five of the seven games. Thank you notes can be sent to defensive end Bill Ennising and defensive tackle Jarris DeVries. In the first ever meeting between these teams, I'll take Mr. Poor Mouse Hawkeyes. Bojo, one Big Ten team well on its way to a bowl win. The big and Ron Day, 19 for 152 and a pair of touchdowns. It's Badgers big. It's the perfect landing. It's another business day. today. For just $18.95 a day, you can rent a Dodge Neon or similar compact car from Thrifty. We're working on something up here. I tried three wide rocket. Mm -hmm. They blitz, it won't work. What about a quick slam? Okay, Mike, we're almost there. Come on, come on, come on. Look at Pro Split Z out. What's taking so long up there? Okay, Mike, here we go. Three wide, 78, Z out, Y cross. All right, all set. Let's go, let's go. Good call, guys. Good job. You want to play sport at an NCAA Division I or II school? You must be certified by the NCAA Initial Eligibility Clearinghouse. Get one of these student release forms from your coach or guidance counselor and send it to the clearinghouse. Remember, if you're not certified, you can't compete as a freshman in Division I or II. For more information, call toll-free 800-638-3731. Want to play? No to rules. This message provided by the NCAA. ABC and ESPN offer you the most complete coverage anywhere. ESPN's Bowl Week is underway and brings with it a healthy helping of analysis on the battle for number one with those two guys. ABC provides the punctuation with their broadcast of the national championship, the Rose Bowl and the Sugar Bowl. ASPN and ESPN, your source for college football. Tomorrow night, from the Georgia Dome, two powerful running teams, Clemson and LSU, as the Tigers try for the fifth 10-win season in school history. With a preview of that game, we go to Dave Barnett in Atlanta.
There's a near-capacity house expected inside the Georgia Dome in Atlanta tomorrow for the Peach Bowl, matching from the ACC, the Clemson Tigers, working out behind me, and from the SEC, the LSU Tigers. It's expected to be one of the closer bowl games, and we had a chance to talk to both head coaches. I think something unique to this game is whatever running offense throws the ball better. I don't think either one of us are going to be able to go into this game one-dimensional. So I think our defense, uh, and not only our front seven, but our safeties also, uh, we have to tackle very well, uh, and we cannot get pushed off the line of scrimmage by their offensive line. And Todd Christensen, there's a similarity that goes beyond the Tiger nickname, and it's to be found at the running back spot. Both universities are very dependent upon their tailback to generate some offense. First of all, Kevin Falk for the LSU Tigers. All-American this season at the all-purpose position. He rushed for over 1,200 yards. This is the young man that can go the distance when he gets his hands on the ball. On the other side is Raymond Priester, a between-the-tackles guy, 230-pounder, effective nonetheless with back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons, 64 yards away from being the all-time leading rusher in Clemson history. And, Chris, my partner's bold opinion in this one, the Tigers to take a victory back to Death Valley. Now back to you. you guys, look forward to the cat fight tomorrow night. Not much of a fight being put up by Utah. Mike Samuel on the Badgers by four touchdowns at the break. The second half is coming up. Since we launched MSNBC, we've been making news. MSNBC instantly emerged as a rival to CNN. MSNBC proved it can play with the big boys. But the real buzz is coming from you. A great source of information. A lively interchange of thoughtful ideas on key issues. Keep up the progressive attitude and willingness to stick your neck out. A great concept whose time has come. Watch MSNBC, the 24-hour cable and internet news service, and see what you think. MSNBC. Our lines are open. Long may you run. Why not celebrate the season in a special place? Like the driver's seat of the newly refined Lincoln Mark 8. Or here, with the innovative luxury of the front-wheel drive Lincoln Continental. Perhaps this spot in the roomiest luxury sedan of them all, Lincoln Town Car. With all three Lincolns priced at just $37,950, any of these holiday destinations will make an excellent choice. Three cars that stand apart, one price that stands alone only at your Lincoln dealer. Jordan River has feeding into it several streams coming from canyons where in the old days there were lead mines. We got the students out into the river where they collected samples of the sediments. My feeling is that the students need to have the experience while they're still at the university of seeing that what they've learned at the university can be applied in remedying some of the problems that exist in our communities. The University of Utah, Communities of Learning. vacation spot. Maybe that's because they know Arizona has 300 days of sunshine a year. And 267 lakes where the sun has a place to shine down upon. 210 golf courses just to put a little green next to all that blue. About 1,300 hotels and resorts, two or three times as many resort pools, and who knows how many resort pool towels. Maybe visitors come here just for the elbow room. After all, 
Arizona's got more than 114,000 total square miles of it. Or the fact that wind, water, volcanoes, and even meteors carved out a spectacular landscape millions of years ago, give or take a year. Or the happy notion that for every wish made, there are half a dozen more waiting to be granted. And here's a thought. Maybe numbers aren't very important at all. But if all this has made you a little curious, there's just one number you need to remember. Call this toll-free number now to receive your free Arizona travel packet. Arizona, where the wonders are numberless. Wisconsin in the first half, just about set to start the third quarter. They lead Utah 31-3, to thanks to Ron Dane. Maybe on his way to a Copper Bowl record in a two-play sequence in the second quarter. He did all of the 77 yards, including 40 for the touchdown. Two touchdowns for him in the first half, but maybe that's not the difference. No, the, I think two of the other key plays was that play to the tight end right there that was not caught, and then the very next play, Tarek Sala gets the hand on the pass to the outside. Weems makes the deflected catch puts it in the end zone and really a 14 point turnaround for Utah and that changed the complexion of the game. John Hall the kick as Utah the good news for them is they get their hands on the football to start the second half but they bobble it as Dyson picks it up and Dyson across the 20 still dragging people with him gets out to the 23 yard line dyson looks like a guy that if you're a utah fan could make a difference they're gonna have to find him in the second half now yeah, I, he's not hard to find he's been open most of the day mike fouts has to get him the football that is a matchup that wisconsin's having trouble handling they could force some coverage over there and some other things would open right now mike fouts has to play better yep he had two interceptions in that first half and there's the turnover story you see down at the bottom of the utah list and Wisconsin has not needed the passing yardage. We didn't expect they were going to need much when you're putting up 205 on the ground. Mike Samuel has run for a touchdown as well in that first half of play. So the Utes start from their own 24-yard line to start the third quarter. Toss to Johnson. And Juan's got it out across the 30 to the 32-yard line as we check in with Adrian. Well, Brad, as this game was about to kick off, I heard Wisconsin defensive football players say, we literally dare uh, running back named Fuamatu Ma'afala to run against us. Well, they don't have to worry about that situation anymore because of the injury that took place in the first half. Keep an eye on Ma'afala as he goes into the line. It really isn't anything that took place as he backed into the defensive line of Wisconsin there. The injury took place as someone rolled on top of him hobbled off the field and is now at St. Mary's Hospital here locally in Tucson. We're waiting for a definitive diagnosis on him. Probable broken ankle. When the uh, pictures come back from the x-ray, guys, I'll let you know exactly what the situation is. All right, hey, thanks. Sala hit on the stop of Juan Johnson short of the first down. The other injury uh, to Utah in the first half, Robert Love, their outstanding linebacker, fractured his thumb. It was just the bone was protruding right from the skin, and he will have to have that stitched up. Not sure if he's going to turn back on the football field. On, the second time tonight, we saw Juan Johnson limp out, and he is Puma follows replacement, and so that means Omar Bacon will have to carry the bacon, as it were, now, if indeed they keep it on the ground. And Omar Bacon is right here from Tucson, Arizona. Third down at two. They'll throw. Batted in the air, and intercepted. Picked off by Diet Delevey this time. Somebody got a hand on that one. I wouldn't be shocked if it was Sala, but it is. Gee, he's in the running for MVP of the game if he gets his hand on this one. Also could have been Jurowitz inside because uh, Jurowitz and those guys are all jumping. But that ball, again, was thrown. And, and remember, Mike Fouts probably is under 5 feet, 10 inches tall. He's going to be at the end of the scrimmage, line of scrimmage. Let's see if it looks like McClusick that time, number 94. Well, just pick a guy. It's one yep. of those guys, and they suck their hand up and uh, call a play. And that was a real odd one for it to be deflected because Fouts was trying to throw that ball deep downfield, but he still got it batted down. Very odd. Third turnover. All interceptions off the arm of Mike Fouts. Two of them tipped. Here comes Dane. Ron Dane into the secondary. Still on his feet. 
He fumbled the ball that time, though, at the end. And Utah says they have it. I don't know. I thought it was Kansas guy got it. It is Utah ball. Dane lost it as he oh. got inside the 10-yard line. I think Clarence lost, and number 20, the corner, came back real late as Ron Dane made a couple guys miss, broke a tackle, I thought he thought he thought he was in the clear to run into the end. Watch this cut. Boom. By Lusk. Runs through a tackle right there. Then coming from the left side, Lawson comes in and strips it. Ball pops down, and I think Gottfried's the guy, number 46, who fell on the football. Well, one mistake. I mean, he's just a high schooler. I mean, comes young. over, taps him on the helmet, <laughs> says, hey, you got 25 yards. You maybe shouldn't have tried to get the last two. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, you know, if there was any hope for Utah, they had to get a turnover, and they got one deep in their own territory is where they have to start to. Johnson off the bench after limping off and back on to gain about a yard. Sala made the hit. Got help from Lysak. Well, Tarek Sala has earned the respect of the Big Ten over four years of playing football. And I think he's earning everybody's respect here in the WAC now that is watching this football game because he does not look the part as a big defensive end. He's really a glorified rush linebacker who puts his hand down and continues to make play after play. Career sack leader for Wisconsin. He's one tackle for loss to tie Mike Thompson in that category of the school record books. Bounce all day to throw now, but nobody over there nobody except one of the Wisconsin coaches who made a pretty nice draft. It is not allowed to be caught there on the outside. This guy in red jersey, though. You know, he's got somebody out there. Throwing the ball that time to Rocky Henry. But no one was there. His spouse just got rid of it. Pretty good catch by Jay Hayes, though, the outside linebacker coach for Wisconsin. At the 10-yard line, third down. And nine. Wisconsin with a Big Ten putting a licking on Utah from the whack right now, unless they can come back this half. There's a nice toss. Complete out to Keyhan. And Keyhan's got a first down. Terrence Keyhan, who had a pretty good ball game when we saw Utah in the regular season against BYU. This ball was thrown with good timing to the outside. Terrence Keyhan is going to go down just beyond the first down marker. Watch how this ball is delivered right on time. Look at balls release. Guys turning. Here's the player, the corner that can make the play. It's gunned in there just in time before Suttle can get by and make the play. So a first down for Utah out across the 20 to the 22. Draw play to Johnson. And Juan goes out to the 28-yard line. Pete Monty in on the tackle. Earlier bowl games today, Big East doing a good job with Miami's win at Syracuse. And a win over Houston. When you're talking about the Big East being 2-0, two, oh, two big bowl games for the WAC. Utah and, of course, BYU matched up later in the bowl, you know, as the bowls progress. Really playing for their conference in these games. They felt slighted by the Bulls, and now they have to go on the football field and show everyone they're a better conference than they're being given credit for. Second down at four from behind Mike Fox. Woo. Threw that one a little bit behind Benninger, who turned at the last instant. You see, that's the timing on that play where he was then working with Terrence Keehan. Keehan, a senior, 25 years old. I mean, he's been with bouts. they probably thrown that thing in their sleep hundreds of times. Benninger, not as many throws, and that ball either Benninger went a step too deep, Bouts threw it a step early, but it was no timing on the play. At the 29, Mike Fouts, three picks. Two of them were tipped, and the other one, Monty, made a great play from his middle linebacker spot. Third down, a short four here. Here comes a blitz. Fox hangs in, throws a slant complete, the first down. Nice throw. Out to Donnie Utu. 
Adrian, that's the one play, guys, I got the indication from the Utah locker room at halftime. They figured they can continue to move the ball, more importantly, control the ball here in the third quarter, get some points on the board, because they don't think that there's anyone on the Wisconsin defensive uh, unit, specifically in the secondary, who can hang with Rocky Henry or Dyson on that play. Remember how effective it was in the first half? That's the play McBride thinks will keep them in this game, at least get a close pass. The problem with throwing short is those hands up front get in the yep. way. And we've seen a lot of tip passes tonight. Fox has a slant the other way to Henry. And he's sandwiched at the 41-yard line. Pretty good job all night by this Utah offensive line. They've only given up 10 sacks all season in a, in a conference that throws the ball a lot. 10 sacks. You can see they've given Fouts pretty good protection. I mean, this is a good rushing defense that you're facing in Wisconsin. And then you can look at it right there. 10 sacks all year matched up against the best in the Big Ten on the outside. No tonight. sacks tonight on 30 pass plays for Utah. The tip passes him in the difference. Johnson. Adamov pulls him down, but not before he gets the first down. Out at the 47-yard line. Ten minutes left third quarter after they move the sticks. 31-3, Wisconsin. Barry Sims this time. He goes from pass blocking to a good job on the run blocking. Left side of your screen right here. Watch how he closes down on Jurowitz this time. It takes Jurowitz as he tried to get back in the play completely out of it. That is good run blocking when you couple that with the pass protection. I think the Utah offensive line has done a good job tonight. Ninth play of the drive. Remember, they started inside their own 10 after that game fumble. Fox, this time he's level. There's sack number one, boy. What is that? Like, like talking about a free throw shooter right before he went in. Yeah. They got a streak of uh, it's 27 in a row, and all of a sudden, Big Jurowitz comes in there and ends it. Coming around Danny Davis on the right side, the right guard, he goes out, just pushes his hands away, gets into Mike Fouts' face, and there's nothing Fouts could have done on that one but eat it. As we talked about earlier, they liked the fact that they could put Jurowitz inside. He started the season at defensive end, but then Tom Moore came on strong enough to be the starter outside, and it gave them presence inside with big number 85. He's only been there half the year, and he's had five sacks since the second half of the year at tackle. Second and 16 now. Fox has time. Buys himself a little extra. And now he's going to run for what he can. And Tom Burke chases him out of bounds as he got to the 50. Good coverage in that secondary that time by Wisconsin. They dropped into a deep zone and there was no one to throw the ball to. Mike Potts, an interesting story in that he has really never been a starter until this last couple of years at Utah. He was a backup guy in high school, a backup in junior college to Tony Banks. He's had to fight for every pass he's been able to throw, that's for sure. And he was really ready to play this game, really looking forward to it. He said, I know you guys saw me against BYU. He said, I did not recognize that team that day. Yeah. Can't wait to play this football game. Third down at seven. Across the middle, first down and some more. Keyhan got away from the first defender. I think it was Carter that time, the linebacker, really a strong safety type linebacker player, Daryl Carter, number 19, that Keyhan was matched up against. And that's just an option route. He ran it one time to the right for a first down. Now they throw it to the guy to the left. Keyhan's a really interesting guy, 25-year-old senior yeah. playing for Utah in his last football game for the Utes. Former walk-on who makes the catch, picks up the first down. Wisconsin hasn't needed to pass. Utah knows they have to to try to get back in. That's going to go deep. Just over the outstretched arms of Kevin Dyson, who had a little battle going on downfield. Weems did a good job that time of getting in Dyson's face as Dyson says, I need help. Now you wonder if that could be just cramping up on that play because he, and he's doing a lot of running. Every time you're throwing a route, you're either catching the ball or clearing for someone else, and you could cramp up. They're going to work on the legs of Dyson. Yep, that's exactly what it is, cramping up. 8-19 remaining third quarter. Dyson will limp off his team, trailing 31-3. and 
pain, nothing else. No caplet, no liquid has Alka-Seltzer's effervescent power, plus the medicine for your worst symptoms. Alka-Seltzer, the best medicine for heartburn and pain. Give me a large fry super size. I got it. It's time to pick the 97 NBA All-Star team. And you can vote for your favorite players. I love the haircut. Where they serve America's favorite fries. McDonald's. Vote today. It's your world, baby. See, Bob, was that your daughter on hard copy last night? Hey, Bob, did they ever find your gold card? Hey, Bob, I hear your neighbor's doing it. Bob, your computer crashed. Hi, Bob. What about your root canal? Bummer. Life gotten a little crazy? Try the simple sanity of an Accord sedan. From Honda. Excuse me, think your disposable razor shapes as comfortably as his Gillette Sensor Excel? Yeah, we'll try Sensor Excel. It'll change your mind. After one shave with Sensor Excel, we bet you don't go back. Because only Sensor Excel is protective microfins for extra comfort. Wow. And self-adjusting blades for extra closeness. Mm. Disposables don't. And Sensor Excel gives more shapes per blade than any disposable. Excuse Take me. Take the Sensor Excel challenge. Bet you don't go back to disposables. Hey, I want my Sensor Excel back. Hey, hey. Fouts trying to throw the screen and it's intercepted by Sorrell Weems down the sideline. Fouts to beat and he does. Will he take it? Yes, he will. Touchdown, Wisconsin. Sorrell Weems, a senior out of Detroit, who was the man that took the tip pass of Tarek Sala, 82 yards for a touchdown earlier. 12th play of the Utah drive. They got second down to 10. Draw play. Johnson hit the backfield, bounced off, and Sala hangs with it. And Lamar Campbell also, is, usually we see when we watch Big Ten football games a lot out in corner, but in this pass happy game, you can see a little change up that Wisconsin has made. They've moved him as a nickel back to the safety spot and brought Weems into that corner spot. That's a good change up by Kevin Cosgrove. And uh, one that has paid off dividends for this football team. He's done a nice job against the running game also. Third down at seven with 7.45 remaining in the third quarter. 31-3. Badgers. Remember this drive started for Utah at its own eight-yard line after the Ron Dane fumble. Let's see if they can find Keehan again. Quick slant the other way and a first down. Rocky Henry in front of Jason Suttle. No, that's Utu. Excuse me, not Henry. Down to Utu. Graves mixing it up to the wide receivers. As you see Utah signaling this play, you'll see three guys signaling in the play. Now, usually you just use two, but they must figure this Wisconsin staff is pretty smart. So now we're we going to go three of them. You don't know which one's the live guy. Right. We don't want to say that two of those guys are dummies, but that's kind of what. <laughs> First down at the 22. He had on the move, toss sweep to Bacon. Nice collision at the 20, and he bounces his way to the 19. Jurowitz and Monty. Monty, the last guy off his back. Pete Monty is another one of those true seniors that played in the Rose Bowl four years ago as a freshman and now finishes off his career here in a bowl game, and what a career he has had. Out of Fort Collins, Colorado. He's got a grandma that lives here in Arizona, so... He had an easy trip. Six tackles officially. They've got that matchup to get it to tight end, but I don't know if I want it again. Well, there it is. They do. This time it's complete. Not a touchdown, but this time Chris Dawson holds. Good call, Gary. Well, it, it's there, and I can see in the game planning. I mean, uh, they really didn't tell us that they had this thing before the game, but when you watch it, it just pops out. And if you see it, the linebacker is very much inside. Lysik right here is showing run, run, run. Tight end just comes to the outside, and it's a fade to your tight end. A really interesting play. If you've got a good tight end right there, that's an easy throw. Had they completed that one early in this game, this would still be a football game because Fouts wouldn't have had to take those chances at the end of the half. Now it's first and goal at the three. 
Bacon. Still trying to get there. Forward progress got him to about the yard and a half line. Brian Flanagan. Bacon is not crisp enough yet. They got to go <laughs> one more. It's not done. Put it back in the oven. Keep it on the griddle. I like my bacon crisp. Let's see what they can fry up here on the second goal. See, I think it's the guy that has his hat backwards. He's the, last, he's the live guy. See, two guys got it on frontward. Would that make now the guy that's got it on backwards? That's who I'm going with is the live guy. Right over here, I think that's it. He's got the hat on backwards. That makes sense. He's got a clear shot at the style. Yeah, I think that's the guy right there. Second and goal. Bacon, nope. not quite. Not yet. I think they got to use the microwave. This is just taking too long. <laughs> you can get one of those things on TV. You know, we just we got one of those. Now. Got, yeah. I like that. Yeah. See, you just pop it in the microwave. It takes you a couple minutes. That's right. See, here they got to heat up the, the grill. It's got its own drip pan and everything right. built right in. Has to go right now. Is, see, he doesn't need any dummies. He, no, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> Down to the one-yard line, third and goal. This is two-down territory. They'll use all four downs to try to score. They might need it. Yep. Johnson <laughs> in the backfield for Utah. Bacon joins him on the move. It's one to the end zone. Touchdown. Tyler Pole that time did a nice job of blocking at the end man line of scrimmage and made it work. And that was an important drive. Following the turnover by Dane, Mike Fouch drove his team down there, you know, right in the whack. 21 points, that's nothing. Right. So, I mean, that's the uh, heck. 21, we're right in this thing. 92-yard drive after the fumble recovery. And Juan Johnson caps it from a yard out. Extra point caught up from Pulsifer. To cut it to three touchdowns, Wisconsin. He does with four minutes and 14 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Impressive drive for Utah. Had several key third down situations, and then on third and goal, it was one to the end zone. The Adventure Discovered Sweepstakes. I've been shopping. It's all right here on my Discover Card statement. Use your Discover Card and you could win everything on Boyd Matson's statement and join him on a National Geographic filming expedition. It pays to discover. Hey, Mr. B. I'm Denise's friend, Ted. Wow. Uh, sorry about the truck. You should go to Midas. That's a very good idea. At Midas, we'll find your exhaust problem, explain your options so you'll know what to do. It's the Midas way, a better system for you and your car. Didn't have a hard hat on, but nonetheless, happy holidays from Tucson. 31 to 10, finally a gift here for Utah. Here's Tyler Cooley right there. He's going to come around to the outside and block Pete Monty. That's the key block that makes it go right from the outside. Watch as he snap the ball. There's the fit, and that allows the touchdown to the outside. Good job. He's talking about key third down situations on that drive. Utah was 5 for 5 on third down to help take it 92 yards for the touchdown. Pulsifer's kick. Aaron Stecker camps under it at the five. And Stecker only to about the 21, where Utah puts him down there. Wisconsin will have it on offense, and we'll see more of this guy when we come back after this timeout. The 
the hum of the saw, the wail of the drill, the rhythm of the plane. If you love the music of woodworking, listen to this free TV offer. It's 101 Shop Tips, packed with secrets from the pros like a jig for routing evenly spaced dados, straightening uneven edges. You'll get 101 time-saving tips, and you get it free when you order cabinet making for just $9.99. Packed with hundreds of full-color photos and illustrations, cabinet making shows you how to master every cabinetry technique and get picture-perfect results. Preview future volumes from the art of woodworking with no commitment to buy. Use your credit card and get this video, Shop Secrets from Master Craftsman, free. So call now to order cabinet making for just $9.99 and get 101 shop tips free. Use your credit card and get your free Shop Secrets video. Call now. Call 1-800-754-8282 to order cabinet making and get your free 101 shop tips. Use your credit card and you'll receive your free shop secrets video or send check and money order to the address on your screen. ESPN's presentation of the Copper Bowl is brought to you by Gillette Sensor XL and the Gillette Series. Gillette, the best a man can get. That's a nice license plate. He's at 70 above it, about 27 <laughs> below in Madison, probably. <laughs> at the 21-yard line, first down, Wisconsin. They lead been cut to 21. Dane, oh, oh, wow. Didn't get anything out of that. Armin Moglin made the head-to-head -head contact with him at the end of that play. He broke a couple tackles there, but didn't gain big yards. But he has gained big yards in this football game by breaking tackles. 80 yards to be exact, and he's broken 16 tackles, rushes over 7 yards. That was the goal. They only held him to 4, but those 4 were for 25, 37, and 40. One of them was a touchdown. He got about a yard there, second down and 9. He's on his way to the Copper Bowl record. Byron Hanspark set that when we were here last year. Up the middle this time, across the 25 to the 26. He's got about 4 more. It'll be 3rd and 5. Nate Kia in on the tackle. How about when we talked to Ron McBride about the BYU game? He said, you know, Coach, you're going to face another team that's going to try to take it right at you. And he said, yes. And I watched the game film of that BYU game three straight days, seven hours a day. And what I came to the conclusion of, our technique was poor. Our technique needs to be better. If we stand any chance, we have to play the defense right. Now, they got a few guys healthy. That helped a little bit. That's right. More healthy than they were against BYU, but he said these guys are better than BYU, so it's a walk. Boy, Kevin, is this a big play. Kevin Huntley comes in as the third wideout. Remember, he's the starting defensive back to the bottom of the screen. Samuel looks back to him this way, but he throws instead to the 30 and a first down. Demetrius Brown, his second effort got him a first down. Well, that's what I think is the key to this football game. When Wisconsin does a good job and, and beats good football teams, their quarterbacks make plays on third down. Because in a big game, you're going to get three, four, five of these plays where your quarterback has to pick up a first down. This time, to the outside, the ball is complete, completed. And that was a big first down by Demetrius Brown as he broke two tackles to pick up the first down. You know, as we always do, we dissect everything as we prepare for these games. <laughs> we talk about, does Wisconsin need any passing yards to win? You and I have came to the conclusion, probably not. They've got 16 in the game and they're leading. And a big reason has been their defense and then number 33. Well, I think that's true. I, I always think that you do. I mean, that's my argument. Maybe it's come from where I come from as being a passing type football player. But if you can get two turn, you tell me I'm going to get a turnover for a touchdown and, a, and an interception at the end of the game that takes you down to the 12. No, you probably don't need to right. a lot in that type of game. Circumstances mean so much. Absolutely. Tonight, Wisconsin's only passed when they absolutely felt they had to, and really both times they've come up with first downs on the throws that have equaled 16 yards. And that total yardage is so misleading because it doesn't show a 30-yard interception. Right. Right. Dane up the middle, across the 40 to the 41. Ron Dane can go 50 carries and still not be breathing extremely hard. One of the techniques that a lot of the great running backs use is they do a two-footed hop, almost like a basketball player that they freeze the guy and then they hop. Dane hops, gets his feet spread wide, and he reads it. It's almost like you do a freeze move with an Allen Iverson type cross or what? <laughs> And go to the left, go to the right. Real nice, and all the great backs are able to come to a stop like that and start up. 
Third down, a very long two here in the final minute, third quarter. Four out of seven tonight on third downs. Play action, here's the boot. Samuel might keep it again, he does. Lost the ball, but nobody there. And he picks up the first down at the 45 yard line. John Frank was the guy chasing him. Another great call by Brad Childress that time. Everybody thought Dean was gonna get it. He said, hey, I got a quarterback that can run the ball. He did it for a touchdown earlier in the game. This time, let my quarterback get out there with an option to throw or run, get to the outside, and just get across the line. Now, I don't see how he gets, they moved that ball forward on the fumble, and that's really what got him the first down on the play. Out to the 45, in fact, across the 45. First down, Wisconsin. Two key third down conversions on this drive. Back to what they do best. Dane slipped on his own, or he might have gotten to that corner and got a big gain. Or as it is, he got five yards before Utah could track him down. Let's check in with Adrian. Brad, I can tell you right now, the Utah defense, actually the whole team here is obsessed with getting a turnover. On the previous play, you saw uh, Samuel lose the ball. They're swiping at the ball when the Badgers carry it. They're almost overplaying the pass coverage now, trying to anticipate where he's going to throw the ball breaking on it a little early if they figure they figure if they can get the ball back somehow someplace on the field here before they get down inside the red zone you know they cut that lead down inside of 21 they got a ball game wisconsin's only fumbled eight times all year one of them was dane earlier in this half but the third quarter has come to a close and geez it's 31 to 10. fourth quarter coming up from tucson after this Can you tell which man is at home and which is in a residence inn hotel room? Honey, can you take out the garbage? That was a hint. Residence inn by Marriott, the next best thing to home. Sal, Joe, there's always a future in Sal. Just think, Joe, you're going to be your own boss. Joe, plastics last forever. Joe, let's not call it a pyramid scheme. Emu, Joe, it's the pork of the future. Lots of career opportunities. One car, make it a good one. The Civic Sedan from Honda. Joe, 12 men, one boat. What could be better? Circuit City. You can't find a lower price. We guarantee it. On Super Bowl Sunday, Publishers Clearinghouse could surprise you with $10 million live on TV. Let's go. The bad news is we might catch you off guard. <laughs> the good news is, well, look at this. <laughs> Who cares? No! Got tough heartburn and pain? Nothing else. No caplet, no liquid, has Alka-Seltzer's effervescent power, plus the medicine for your worst symptoms. Alka-Seltzer, the best medicine for heartburn and pain. The ocean, the source of life on planet Earth. Get ready to own it. Battleship CD-ROM, it's all-out super swim naval strategy. High-res 3D graphics, 16-bit audio effects, and nerve-wracking real-time battle. You're being attacked while you're attacking. Fight above and below the water in 2,000 square miles of ocean. Even battle around the globe, on land or modem to modem. You can rule the high seas, or you might end up treading water. Battleship on CD-ROM. If you can't stand the heat, get out of the ocean. Set to start the fourth quarter from Tucson. Brad Nessler, Gary Daniels, and Adrian Karsten, 31 to 10, Wisconsin. Hey, look at this. A little high side hat. Here's, here's what these guys did. Hey, let's do this. Let's all wear the same shirts. We'll sit in a little high side right there. That'll get us on TV. Oh, come on. I don't want to wear the same shirts, Mom. <laughs> it actually said history's my favorite subject, but the other seven sections gave up on it. Ron Dane, they're not giving up on him. You start trying to tackle the football, 
bad things are going to happen when you got a 260 pound tailback. 32 more yards for Dane. He'll open up the fourth quarter. You know what's amazing about Dane is he runs that far, 260 pounds, this time right at the gut, taking it right up there. Even the cameraman couldn't find him. And he doesn't come out of the football game after a run like that. Just stays there. He's already over 200 yards, 229 yards on the game. Jeez, that, that means he's <laughs> that's a lot of yards. That is. Here he goes again. Whoops, slipped on his own. Got about five as we check in with Adrian. Guys, uh, for the front five, or actually front six when Gibby's in the game, Rondane took some of his Christmas money and had some T-shirts made. There's only six in the world of this. The point being, these guys refuse to wear them underneath their pads and get them all sweaty and smelly. They, they think they're going to frame them. This is what they said in the front. O-line, my kind of guys. And he says he's got so much respect for them, but in reverse, they've got so much respect for him, as, as you pointed out earlier in the game, Brad. They think this guy is really special and love to stay around the fifth year if they had it just to be able to play with him more in the future. Someday he's going to be buying his offensive line something a lot more expensive than t-shirts. Yeah, like right? Here he is on a delay. Straight up the middle. Game. <laughs> Down to the one. <laughs> that time. He like caught the game train that time and then held on to the next stop. Wow. That was incredible. Ron Dane did not accelerate until he had to. Watch him with the patience this time. Ooh. Hold on. Lusk goes 200. Lawson, 167 pounds. I got a feeling he's going to get it again. First and goal, Wisconsin, right there at the Utah one-yard line. Close. What? And Utah comes out of the pile with a football. No touchdown. Blown dead. Just outside the goal line. First time he's been stopped for basically no gain tonight. Looks a little tired right now, or took a pretty good shot on that play. The thing Barry Alvarez was telling us is he says he never really gets hit that bad. He, do, he uh, gives out the shot when he's carrying the football. Yeah, he said he's almost like an offensive lineman running the football. This is the play they scored on. They'll run the play to the right, to follow right behind the player, and then walk it into the end zone. Nobody even near him. Third touchdown of the night for Dane. Dane is going to lose lunch again on this one. He's a little upset. He got hit right in the stomach the play before, and he still didn't come out of the football game. I have tremendous respect for him. And if he can make it to the sideline, he'll be able to celebrate. Give me a second, guys. Yeah. <laughs> nice block again that time by Cecil Martin on the end line of scrimmage. The play he scored out to the left in the second quarter of the football game, they just flopped the formation and ran it to the right. Both plays worked. John Hall in for the point after. Extra point is good. And again, with a head of steam and great blocking on that little play to the right side, it was the Dane train again, his third touchdown of the night. Up here. I tried three wide rocket. Mm. If they blitz, it won't work. What about a quick slam? Okay, Mike, we're almost there. Come on, come on, come on. Look at Pro Split Z out. What's taking so long up there? Okay, Mike, here we go. Three wide, 78, Z out, Y cross. All right, all set. Let's go, let's go. Good <laughs> call, guys. Good job.
a bell for people who know champagne. ESPN's presentation of the Copper Bowl is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And by America West, the official airline of the 1996 Copper Bowl. Dane Power Drive by Wisconsin, and now they're out of front by 28 again with 12.31 left. Coming into the game, the two big fellas, first blue out to Mahapala, out after four carries with what could be a broken ankle. The other guy has held up his end of the bargain without a doubt. Ron Dane might be on his way to a Copper Bowl record and just scored his third touchdown and has 246 yards on the night on 30 carries. Thrifty Car Rental Bowl Week continues Sunday night. The Builder Square Alamo Bowl. Tim Dwight, Tavian Banks, and the Iowa Hawkeyes. In San Antonio, they'll take on the number two rusher in the country, a guy whose record is about to fall here tonight, Byron Hansmark, and the Texas Tech Red Raiders. That's Sunday night, 8 o'clock, and then Monday night, Plymouth Holiday Bowl from Jack Murphy Stadium, and Adrian Aguirre and I will be out there to watch Colorado in action as they'll take on Washington. Goes high, intended for Kevin Dyson and complete. Utah tied for second in the WAC Mountain Division and came into this with high hopes. They've been to the Copper Bowl before. Coach McBride had his team here in 92, and they lost a three-pointer in that one right down to the wire against Washington State. Tonight, Wisconsin got it rolling in their direction after... The interception, what could have been a touchdown to the tight end, ended up one play later being an 82-yard interception for Wisconsin, and that's kind of the tie that's turned this game. Keehan with the completion on the first down. 13-yard pickup. Well, when we talked to Rod McBride yesterday, he knew that this football game was a game that whoever was the most physical was going to win it. And he said, you know, I can preach to our guys what physical means, but I think they're going to get a lesson in what physical means in this game. I, mean, I, I think he felt this team could match up, but he said, you know, talk sometimes is hard to understand. They're going to find out what it really means, what I've really been telling them, how they have to play to play with the big boys. Stop running. Throws on the run. Wide out screen again. Rocky Henry trying to weave his way for some yardage and does. Out to the 38-yard line. Mike Babs, three interceptions tonight. He's had huge games this year, though, against Kansas. 476 yards and four touchdowns. We had that game for you on ESPN2, and that was as thrilling a game as we've probably seen all year. Fresno State, he told me yesterday when we talked to him, I said, you know, what game did you really feel on? He said, Fresno State didn't seem like I could do anything wrong. So he has good streaks tonight. I'm afraid the streaks have been on the negative side with some of the passes thrown. Here comes a blitz. At the tight end again. And a catch. Two-string catch by Chris Dawkins. That was a busted coverage that time by Wisconsin. First down, Utah, as we check in with Adrian. Well, a disappointing night for Chris Fuamatu Ma'afala, but there's a bright side to this, guys. He has made it back from St. Mary's Hospital here in Tucson without a broken ankle. Good. Very severe sprain. They took a look at the x-rays. He's here on the sideline. Wanted to get back here as quickly as he could. Only four carries tonight, but he's back here doing the best he can to keep his guys fired up. And when he gets back home, that may hamper his surfing just a bit, I would assume. Wants to get back home. He says he's still homesick for Hawaii. He'll get a little break to get there after the game. Back straight down the middle here. That's where they need to throw the football. In the middle of that zone, two deep safeties. And Keehan is having a big football game. Right in between Adamoff and Huntley, you'll see Keehan just streak down to the middle right there. And there's the hole in the defense. And the ball is delivered so sharply right between the linebackers that no one has time to adjust. That's what you have to do to zones. You have to throw the ball just as the receiver is passing between the linebackers to the secondary, force them into man-to-man -man coverage, and then pick them and screen them and do all the things you like to do. First down to the Wisconsin 25. About 
plenty of time. Dyson coming back the other way. And Daryl Carter made him pay for that five-yard catch right there. No doubt about that. And when you have a big lead like Wisconsin does, what you're saying is, we'll let you move the chains. We'll let you make yards throwing the football. But you're taking time doing we're it. We're not going to let you do it quickly. You know, people say there's no room for a prevent defense in football. They're wrong. You have to have a prevent defense and make teams go the long way occasionally for situations just like this. Second down and four as we worked our way under the 10-minute mark in the fourth quarter. Bounce for his tight end. Incomplete. See, that time Lysak was playing pass. He was not even thinking run on that time to the outside, and it was a much tougher throw. Ball to the outside. Lysak is in position and forces one of those plays. It was almost a one-hander, but uh, we saw earlier that that ball is going to have to be a little more often. Christopherson has made some good catches and one, unfortunately, he missed early, but he's made some good catches since then. Third down, obviously four down territory. Right. At the 20. Henry Dyson, Keehan, three wide outs. He needs to hurry up. He's only got a few seconds left on 25 seconds. Left. This time they... Oh. Nice catch by Bacon. I think he double caught it, and then he fumbled it, and they're going to give it to him. This time, they kind of ran the play as if they were going to throw that wide-out screen and then let that clear out and right. the running back. One of those variations, you know, you say as a coach, you say, I got that wide-out screen, and then you look on film and say, hey, what if on this wide-out screen we don't throw it to him, we just throw it to the outside, make the catch, and could have turned up into the big play, but Omar Bacon bobbled it, and that was uh, really a questionable. That's one of those 28-point calls that you get. Yeah. Up by 28, anything close. Fourth down anyway. Long two left for Utah. And I'm sure Wisconsin will come out of them. They do. Here they come. Bounce. Incomplete. Broken up by Leonard Taylor. He had the attended receiver. And take over on down yeah for wisconsin their secondary you know pass they were tw 11th in the big 10 this year but they've got a lot of their secondary back yes next year they feel good about it 852 left and wisconsin on offense when we come back Why not on the field it's the perfect landing it's another business day today for just $46.95 a day you can rent a Dodge Caravan or similar vehicle from Thrifty. Once a single library held the knowledge of the world. Centuries later data was still controlled by an elite few. Then Oracle freed everyone to work with databases. Today Oracle is putting the knowledge of the world online forever change our markets and our culture. Where do you learn about companies whose future is as limitless as our hunger to know? Exactly. Nasdaq.com the Adventure Discovered Sweepstakes. I've been shopping. It's all right here on my Discover Card statement. Use your Discover Card and you could win everything on Boyd Matson's statement and join him on a National Geographic filming expedition. It pays to discover. If you're busy, and who isn't these days, you don't have time to fool with brake repairs. So at Midas, we give your brakes a thorough inspection and explain your options. It's the Midas way. A better system for you and your car. 52 remaining in the ball game. On Dane on the sideline. His night may be done. So maybe he won't have the Copper Bowl record for rushing. That might be safe for Byron Hansbart. Here's Tom McCullough, who in his own right was a thousand yard rusher last year before the freshman sensation came along. The Big Ten says this indeed is a single season record now, having passed Lorenzo White of Michigan State. And a lot of Wisconsin watchers are saying, what if Ron Dane would have started off the year as the starter? It wasn't even until the fifth game of the year, basically, but the real reason he isn't, 
because of a guy by the name of Carl McCullough. Right. He was a returner, 1,000-yard rusher, and Barry Alvarez said, hey, he's the guy, until you show that you're uh, significantly better, we'll rotate you both, and I think that's good. That says a lot to his teammates that I want to stick with you if you earn your position. And remember, McCullough had to wait his turn behind Brent Moss and Terrell Fletcher, the previous 2,000-yard-plus gainers. Then McCullough had over 1,000 last year, Dane this year, and with that, Wisconsin became the first Big Ten team ever to have four straight 1,000-yard-plus guys that were all different running backs. Yeah, that, that's quite a record, and that shows the commitment that this team has had to running the football with different styles back there. And I think that says a lot about uh, what really this coaching staff has done at Wisconsin, turned a program that, you know, really hadn't done a lot for a lot of years into a consistent bowl team. You know, they did some research and sort of prorated had Dane been the starter and averaged the amount of carries that he's averaged since he's become the starter at the beginning of the year. And they had it figured out that he would have ended up, all things being healthy, with over 2,500 yards coming into this game, which would have smashed what Troy Davis did at Iowa State. He'd be up to 27 and a half, almost 2,800 yards on the year with what he's done tonight. Yeah, which has been 246 yards on 30 carries. And we've seen tonight what he did to Utah, just what he did to the Big Ten. He made people miss, he made big tough yards, he made people punish and tackles. He did everything that a tailback does. And bad news for the Big Ten. Yeah, he's coming back. He's got three more years. Should he desire to do it for three more years? You know what we might have seen tonight, Gary? too is a preview of the Heisman hype to begin for 97. Oh, How can you not say that? Oh, he's definitely one to watch. And if you're one to watch coming out of the Big Ten, you're going to be, that's enough right there because you're in USA Today every day. There's going to be the Dane watch, how many yards he got. Mm -hmm. You don't have to mail out a lot of postcards. Carl McCullough, who is, has a year of eligibility left if he so chooses, has given some thought to whether or not he wants to try the pro ranks. And uh, he's going to sit down with Coach Alvarez after the season. They're going to try to look at what the NFL people think well, of him. I, as you look at the four rushers right there, Carl McCullough did it, of course, last year in 1995. You know, Moss and Fletcher, two good running backs right there. But I think another option that Carl McCullough should look at is one double-A football. I mean, we just saw Randy Moss and uh, Kressler do it a, a week ago at, at Marshall. I mean, that's, that's good football to, you know, give him an opportunity to run and show the pros what he can do. Samuel on the bootleg throws incomplete. And that might be another option they talk about. And Carl comes off. Nice thing, Pete Motley was voted the most valuable player by his Wisconsin teammates. And when he got up for his acceptance speech, he picked out this guy as a guy that he said was a main ingredient of this Wisconsin team that uh, put together now another bowl game and what is soon to be another bowl win. That just shows the class of Pete Monk. Absolutely. Too. I think that's the best thing you can say. That shows a lot about Carl McCullough, too, not sulking and being, right. you know, he was a team player when he knew that there were other guys on the team. Fair catch taken at the 24-yard line, a 40-yard kick by Hall. No return. Will return, though, with 5.46 to go. <laughs> In the high-tech, fast-paced, live on the razor's edge world of news radio, it pays to be first. First with the news, sports, weather, and of course, traffic. By combining professional skill with personal service, SignsNow leads the prop sign industry. SignsNow offers a wide range of signs in a variety of styles to meet every need. Signs to educate. Signs to identify. Signs that sell. And signs to motivate. When you need quality signs to make an impression that lasts, count on SignsNow for professional results. On time, every time. Call us today. 
Who were the year's best athletes? What was the play of the year? Most outrageous play of the year? You tell us. Beginning December 29th, tune into Sports Center and we'll show you the best sports moments of 1996. We'll give you a number to call to cast your vote for the athlete or performance you feel deserves a special Fans Choice SP. Watch Sports Center or vote on ESPN Net Sports Zone for the 1997 SP Awards. Only on ESPN. Forty-six remaining. Wisconsin leads 38 to 10. Utah has it back from its own 24 yard line. Play action for Fouts. He wants to go back with a screen the other way to the tight end, and that one's blown up. Nice play defensively by Pete Diatolevi, who's made a few tonight, including an interception earlier in the ballgame. Coming up New Year's Day on ABC Sports, it's the Rose Bowl, 4.30 Eastern from Pasadena, Arizona State. They're still the talk of this state against Ohio State from the Big Ten. That's at 4.30, still a shot at a national championship for Jake the Snake Plumber at his Arizona State club. That's New Year's Day on ABC Sports, the granddaddy of them all. Second down and 15. The pass was complete, but they lost five yards. And they whistle this one dead before it can get started. Sala gives Fouts a little shove just to let him know he was in the vicinity. One of the wide receivers to the bottom of the screen was in motion. They're going to get an illegal procedure for Utah. Very few penalties, only the third of the Dead game. Dead ball, ball start, number 18 of the offense. The down remains the same. Let's check in with Adrian. Brad, it was during another Badger Bowl season, I think the one with Roses, when this combination came of age. Daryl Bevel to tight end Mike Rohn. Remember inside the red zone, they scored I don't know how many touchdowns. Offense has changed a little bit for Wisconsin. Daryl, since you were playing here, Mike doesn't have to throw the ball anymore when you got that big man in the backfield. Well, I had a couple good backs with me and Terrell Fletcher and Brett Moss, but this kid out there is amazing. I mean, to watch some of the things that he's done, I mean, it's, you know, he's a very special player. Brad, more in a moment here. Bounce goes and a nice grab out to the 35, and he has become his favorite receiver tonight. Let's go back down on the field. Daryl, not a bad throw there, but as we pointed out, Mike didn't have to do that because Ron has run so well. Mike. Did you ever see if you see a, a man the size of Aaron Gibson playing tight end sometimes? No, I did. Uh, yeah. I stretched that 81 jersey out a little bit since I was here, I guess. <laughs> and, uh, he's 400 plus, and uh, he's a big man. It's fun to see the Badgers back in the bowl. Mike, congratulations on your season with the Houston Oilers. And, Daryl, you're now coaching with the quarterbacks at Iowa State. Congratulations to you both. And thanks for taking the time. Okay, All right, good to see a couple old Badgers. And in Ben's case, we mean really old. Father now, a new two and a half month old baby who's at the game tonight. Here's T. Handy, intended receiver, incomplete. You know, Gary and I have come up with an idea that we're going to have to probably go to the NCAA with, then we'll have to patent because we feel that because he plays both tight end and tackle, yeah, let me, let next me help year, here. Yeah, we could go seven. seven 89. 89. And, and then, then have oh, a flap on each yeah, side. Then you could just cover up one side right here and say, okay, he's yep. 89, and then cover up the other side over there, and he's yep. 78. So. And then he doesn't have to change jerseys That's all right, the time. See? I was interested about the kid from Purdue who came up to Barry Alvarez before the game and said, <laughs> isn't there some kind of rule that you, you can't wait limit? That? Yeah, wait <laughs> limit. I mean, if you're a wide receiver, you can't wait that much. I don't care. Yeah, yeah, Barry said it's the greatest line he's ever heard. So he said, isn't there a wait limit for tight ends? And here's Juan Johnson into the secondary. It's inside the 45, down to the 44. Weems finally brought him down, but Juan Johnson gets his longest run of the night, 20 yarder. One sack in this football game, and again, that offensive line has been able, because of the spread out situation, to do a good job turning people around. Todd Jackson that time did a good job of creating room for Johnson to get into the secondary and make yards. It has not been the offense except for the turnovers that has been the problem. They just, like a lot of teams in the Big Ten, a lot of people that have faced this Wisconsin team have been able to slow down the run. At the 43-yard line, first down Utah on the final four minutes of the Copper Bowl from Arizona Stadium in Tucson. And what has been a pleasant trip again, folks. Treat these teams well, and us as well. Almost intercepted off the deflection. That would have been Weems' second of the night. And the weather's been beautiful here since we've been here. Utah was in a legal formation that time. Not enough men on the line of scrimmage, so Wisconsin's going to have the ability to move back should they declare. Just when we say we've been almost penalty-free, we get a couple on this drive. 
You know, I've really been impressed with the way Utah has continued to play in this football game. A lot of times in these bowl games, you know, the players towards the end of the game say, well, you know, there's not going to be any film situation tomorrow. Why don't we just, there's no chance. Let's just cash it in. We've got a big party after the game. We've had a lot of fun. The legal formation on the offense, only a six-man line, first and 15. Let's just have some fun. But Utah has continued to play hard, and I think they understand that they're playing, as you look at the total yards, not only this game, but for the pride of their conference as they finish off this game. That's a credit to Ron McBride, the second winningest coach in Utah history. And he also feels he'll have a good football team next year. Either we got a lot of people coming back. We got two young quarterbacks. And we got this guy right here coming back, and he'll be healthy. He'll be a junior next year. Chris Pumatu Mahafala, we asked Chris what he has to do in the offseason to get better. He says, no, I just got to work harder. I got I to gotta worry about my weight. And, and the great line, you said, what's the hardest part of working out for you? He said, just getting up in the morning. <laughs> Bounce wants to go deep. Had to throw off his back foot. And it's intercepted, but you know what? There was contact down at the five-yard line by Weems. And I think they're going to get a gift here and a penalty. Yeah, they will. It'll be a 15-yard penalty in college football, so it's not going to be spotted at the four or five-yard line. But into that play, it was thrown very, very late. And that time, Tarek Sala was again putting the pressure on fouls. But watch how this ball is thrown way, way, way late. Weems is on Rocky Henry, and then coming across, Bobby Myers gets the interception, but it won't count. Tarek Sala, there was the shot he gave foul. Defensive pass interference against number seven. Penalty is 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. So that will give Utah the first down with 3.51 remaining. Walk it off from the line of scrimmage. Tarek Sala tonight, Gary, four tackles, one tackle for loss. That pass defended the tip pass that turned into an interception for a touchdown and a blocked field goal. Not a bad outing for 42, huh? Yeah. Speaking of NFL rules, that ball would have been on the floor. We got an NFL player from Utah also at this game. On the left, that's Luther Ellis, Detroit Lion number one draft pick. And that team just changed coaches. And right. uh, Luther's going to be playing for a new man next year. Really came out his second year. Boy, you remember the bowl game he had here in the Copper yeah. when they played Washington State and Drew Bledsoe. I don't think he'd probably want any part of Ron Dane tonight no, either. No, he said, this isn't bad standing on the side. <laughs> Here's a little delay to Juan Johnson. Tom Burke's got him wrapped up. Sala helps him out. Yeah, and so did Daryl Carter that time make that play bounce to the outside. Tarek Sala, part of that with Tom Burke. We talked about Sala tonight. A little bit of everything for Tarek. The tip pass that Weems took 82 yards the other way. Now here's the field goal attempt to end the second quarter. Boom, he knocks that one down. And one of the several tackles he's been involved with tonight. With one tackle for loss, he's now tied Mike Thompson in the Wisconsin record books in that category. Already the sack record holder for the Badgers. Here's Dyson. He slips past his man. It's inside the 20. Dyson really has quick feet. He's tall, 6'3", 200 pounder, and really anticipates the catch and moves his feet. But you know, catching the balls for short yardage at this stage of the game, you're going to get a lot of stats, but yeah. it really doesn't mean much. When Utah had to make the plays, they couldn't make them in the first half. <laughs> They spell just like I do. <laughs> well, you get on TV. That's right. Whatever works. Creative, creative, right? Dyson, six catches for Kevin tonight for 95 yards. He was a first-team all-WAC performer. And Watt Johnson gets four. Carter and Monty. And on the stop. Pete Monty, he's closing in on the all-time tackle marks of... I think he has now passed Crumry, and Casper's still in his sights, depending on how long this 228 yeah. takes. Pete Monty's saying, come on, run the ball. Yeah, <laughs> couple, couple inside, and right. I'm going to catch Casper. They maybe should get in the huddle right now and say, hey, guys, funnel it to me. You know, just let me take make the tackle. Right now, he needs one to tie Gary Casper, two to break his Wisconsin tackle record. Gary's watching this thing someplace going, throw the ball. <laughs> throw the ball. <laughs> and they will. About uh-oh, that's picked off at the goal line by Jason Suttle. Fourth interception of the night, and Suttle's still on his feet. 
You know, this one, you really, it, it's a bad throw, but at this stage of the game, you got to try to do things, yeah. and you're sticking it in there. You won earlier at the end of the half. I think that was the poorest throw of the day, but right now, Mike Fouts was saying, I want to make a touchdown on a play he had no business throwing a touchdown pass. 154 remaining in the ball game. All Wisconsin, and they'll have it when we come back. In the beginning was the ordinary battery. Then came the long-lasting Duracell battery. And now, the next leap forward, introducing Duracell Power Check. The battery with a fuel gauge so you can check its power. Anytime, anywhere. New Duracell Power Check. No battery is more advanced. You've never had anything, anything like this. Rap Long John's Wrap? It's the freshest idea yet. You made my mouth Chicken, shrimp, or fish. You make Your choice, three amazing sauces. Groovy. Up with all kinds of fresh stuff. All for just $1.99 or $2.99. Take a fresh look at Long John Silver's. Last thing, I think I love you. Christmas present or an early 50th birthday present, which is coming up in a couple of days for that guy. But Barry Alvarez's team about to win a bowl game 38 to 10. He got a lot of help from his freshman sensation. And he said, you know, Ron was carrying this package around on the bus in Madison, on the plane. Somebody almost sat on it. And then he carried it around like it was a piece of china when we got to Tucson. He said, finally, my wife Cindy had to say, Ron, what is in the box? He says, oh, it's a Christmas present for the coach. He said he could have given it to me in Wisconsin. It was <laughs> an autographed picture of Ron Dane. Nice gift. Nice coach. And tonight he goes for a near Copper Bowl record. And, of course, Dane will be back for the Badgers next year. And he'll be the early Heisman hype. And you look at Wisconsin's schedule, Gary. Well, I like this schedule. I'll tell you that. They start off with three games that they can win, obviously. They're playing, I think, inferior talent. And then they have nice home games. And... Also, Consider who they don't play. And also who they don't play. They don't play Michigan State and Ohio State, two of the most physical football teams. They get Michigan back on their schedule, but they start out pretty nicely and then pick up steam at the end when they finish off with Iowa, Michigan, and Penn State. And I think, uh, I think it bodes well. Here's the other guy I think you're going to see more of in the preseason next year if you're a Badger fan. I think the competition at quarterback, Mike Samuel played well tonight. Yes. And he's done what they asked him to do after he took over for Daryl Bevel who, of course, graduated, but Scott Cavanaugh, who's in there playing quarterback right now, I don't think it's a big secret that he and Samuel will be in the battle for the starting quarterback job next year. And, and if they get any better, you know, I'm sure Samuel will improve, and Cavanaugh has a good arm. If they get any better throwing the ball, they get Tony Simmons back, their speed receiver. Uh -huh. They could be dangerous on offense. Of course, they'll have to replace four senior offensive linemen. Scott Cavanaugh, the younger brother of the Kansas State starter, Brian Cavanaugh, who we saw a lot of last year in the bowl game. Here's Aaron Stecker. And I think it's a real tribute to the guys that signed up with Barry, you know, five years ago now, four years ago now, uh, guys like uh, Wunsch and uh, Sala and Monty that have stuck Jurowitz. Castro. I mean, uh, these are guys that came to Wisconsin that believed in Barry Alvarez, and it has paid off as they've gone to a Rose Bowl at freshman and then finish off their career with a victory here in the Copper Bowl. Wisconsin only won one bowl game in its history before Barry Alvarez's arrival, and this is his third win now as he's won the Rose, the Hall of Fame, and soon to be the Copper Bowl here in the next 36 seconds. You know, and I think, you, you know, you never know really a lot about yourself until you get to a critical point in your career. Everything was really running smoothly for Barry. He had a real tough four-game stretch when they had the disaster against Northwestern. They survived it, and I think they're going to be better in the long run because of it. 
They definitely banded together and played hard down the stretch to go four and one to get the bowl game. And tonight, getting ready to win it here in the final moments. Sports Center is about a half minute away. This has not been a, a great night for Utah, but they've seen what the big boys play like physically. And it has not been, I mean, I think the other loser of this game has been the WAC Conference. The seventh place team in the Big Ten just dusted off the third best team or the second best team in the WAC. And Coach Alvarez just got a bath. He's going to have another eight win season. Only three Wisconsin teams before tonight had ever won eight. Back in 62, the 93 and 94 clubs, and now the 96 edition gets its eighth victory of the season here in the Copper Bowl by a final margin of 38 to 10. Coming up next, Sports Center with a full wrap up of all the day's events and activities. Right now for Gary Danielson and Adrian Karsten and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Brad Nessler saying so long from Tucson. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Our congratulations to Wisconsin, the 1996 Copper Bowl champions. Learn to stray from his daddy. You know, some days his shoulder would get so sore it would just about fall off. He Adamov's had to be involved in quite a few stops today, and that's not a good sign. That means that front wall, first wave of seven. You're talking about a football team for Wisconsin that was only giving up 90 yards rushing a game going into last week's Michigan State game. Michigan State ran for 202 yards, and the staff here kind of wrote it off to saying we're in a bit of a hangover, and we also faced a really tough runner that made us whip, uh, whip a few times. Purdue has 167 yards on the ground. Split nicely between Matthews and Watson. Now they throw the pass to Watson. And Carter puts the hit on him at the 34-yard line as we check in with Mike Tirico. Mike? Well, Brad, Michigan at the big house has made the most of the turnovers by Michigan State. Second rushing touchdown here for Chris Howard in what has been a physical and, to be honest, two teams pretty annoyed with each other second half. Wolverines up 22 at home. Iowa has scored again. They lead Illinois 31-14 late in the fourth. Here, 33 to 17. You stay warm however you can. That's a good-looking coat. Yeah, only you can only see things between the 40s. And right, the right. That's, <laughs> or the hash marks if you're sitting in the end. Right. <laughs> Traps good. Under pressure, floats it out. Alfred with a catch. Knocked out of bounds near the 23-yard line. Another first down. You really have to hand it to a lot of different coaches in this league. Wisconsin is doing what they do best on offense, run the ball with a physical football team. Purdue is using balance. They have kept Wisconsin's defense off balance all that time, all day. David Lysak that time had a clear shot at Trefsker, but the quick snap kept them off balance. The off balance offense by Purdue has been moving the ball successfully. They just haven't been able to stop in the turnover and the misfield right have been the key to the football game. Rick's been getting rid of that ball in a hurry too. Knows how to get it out of there, the senior. Here he is on a quarterback draw. Spins down to the 21, got about two or three. Daryl Carter and Pete Motti are there. Same play he scored on earlier in the game. Kendall Matthews will come into your screen. You can see it right there, number 43. He's going to come in and track this guy. There's the, the pulling guard coming in at the same time. Follow. I think somebody might have busted assignment. You had the guard and the running back going for the same linebacker. That's why they didn't pop it. There's the play selection today. That's Fallon. That's balance, and that's a lot of plays. That is a lot of plays. As I said earlier, they ran 88 plays last year against Wisconsin. Second down and eight. Option, the pitch to Matthews. Heading for the sideline. Tracked down by Tarek Sala from the backside to make the stop, and it'll bring up a third down and a couple. 
When you run the option to the weak side of the field, Kevin Cosgrove told us yesterday that the free safety, this time Kevin Huntley, he's right here. He's the guy that has to be the alley runner and make the play. Here comes the option. The ball is pitched. Here's the guy that has to come one-on-one. -on -one. Now watch the move by Matthews. He makes Kevin Huntley miss on the play. Bad angle. That's why they get a big play. There's Kevin Castro looking at his defense. That of course, his face is rather a third down of a short three. Trescher hangs in, throws high. Almost caught a second time. Was that hit three times? Tillman almost caught that thing. I thought it be intercepted on the ricochet. Lamar Campbell and Kevin Huntley were the guys going for this ball, and Huntley cannot believe he didn't come up with it. Remember, Huntley used to be a wide receiver. This ball was thrown high. There's one tip, there's two tip, there's three tips, and then here comes a fourth tip. <laughs> wow. And here comes a fourth down. <laughs> Got his man, Matthews. Now, did he get a first down? I think so. Yeah, I think he did. But not by much. Pete Monty had the coverage all the way coming out of the backfield. I'll tell you, Tresker does not throw the prettiest ball I have ever seen. But he gets it there, and he's been very accurate when he needed to be in this football game. He needed a very long two, and he got a very short three on that pass play. And it's first down, Purdue. If Tresker throws a spiral here in this fourth quarter, it's going to be the the first one. That time was a pretty good pass to the outside. Put it right exactly where he had to. Two tight ends set for Purdue. The 13 of Wisconsin. Watson broke one tackle. Dragging people with him and Watson has got it down to the eight yard line. Adamov holding on for dear life. This, this is a design cutback again. Watson's going to come this way and then run behind the block of the backside tackle. Right there is the block by Mark Fisher that Watson's going to cut behind. This is a play that Fisher has got to know that if he stays with his man, Watson will find the alley. Isaac Jones and Oliver Dotty are the wide receivers on the 16th play of this Purdue March. The delay to Matthews, did he get hit in the backfield by Jurowitz? Yeah. Wow. When I... When you have Oliver Dottie in the football game in that situation, you don't have Brian Aldridge, you're wondering if it's going to be a run, and it was a run on that play. Jurowitz finally got into the left side of your screen right here. Jurowitz is just going to come right off the snap count, beat his man, beat the block inside, and get into the backfield before anything can get started. Jurowitz, 36th career start today for the senior defensive end out of Deerfield, Illinois. This forces is, a third down. This is where Alford comes into play. That's good. Deep drop. Has time. End zone. Touchdown. Will and Tillman. We got a late holding on Sala again. Oh, we got a flag of the 13. You're right. I didn't see it. That is going to be a touchdown saving play by Sala, and he wasn't even in the play. A lot of talking going on, and they're waving it off. Oh, boy. Oh, my. I haven't seen one like that before. I haven't either. I'd love an explanation, but I don't think we're going to get one. That's hard to believe. When someone usually calls holding, they don't put the flag back in their pocket and get talked out of it. Well, now, two-point conversion attempt coming up because with the points the way they are, it takes two sets of eight to make up that missing 16. And even if you miss it, you're only 10 right. points behind. So this is a free run right here. Offered in motion toward the ball. Trexker has a look. Got it. Same guy, same play. <laughs> same play. <laughs> Holy cow. Trexker to Tillman for the touchdown with a flag picked up. Trescher to Tillman for the two-point conversion. We definitely have a ball game in Madison, Wisconsin. I don't even know why we're going to Pinecrest. 
fairways are like swamps, the sand traps are like clay. I mean, personally, I don't even find the course all that challenging. What do you want? Pebble Beach? Yeah. Kelly Springfield tires are designed to go a long way. So go. Get every mile you can out of life. You know it's going to be a 10-hour drive. Good thing weekends are two days. This is for Mr. Blanchard, who told me to make something of myself. For Miss Miller, who never let me settle for a seat. For my parents, who believe in my dreams. For myself, for my future. Be all that you can. than pure, unbridled power is the ability to harness it. Sierra by GMC, putting you comfortably in command. presentation of college football is brought to you by the U.S. Army. Be part of the toughest, smartest army in the world. Be all you can be. And by Sierra, by GMC, putting you comfortably in command. Just over 10 minutes left in the ball game. What is now an eight-point game, 33 to 25, as Rick Tresker hooked up Willie Tillman on a touchdown and a two-point conversion what appeared to be the very same play and now Purdue within striking distance Wisconsin will get it back for the first time in a long time and they'll have to work from their own 20 yard line we saw a flag picked up on the touchdown play and Gary you want to take a look at it well they picked it up on an offensive holding call here it is here's the blocker here's Tarek Sala at the outside watch at the end of this play if he doesn't grab his face mask on the play right there he grabbed his face mask then put his hands up in the air. I'm not sure if it was Fisher or Sweeney. I could not see his number on the play. But I really, it's been a long time since I've seen a holding call waved off like that. Purdue has had to go a long ways today to get their touchdowns, especially. When you look at that stat and then look at the stat that the running back for the other team is closing in on 250 yards rushing, that's really pretty hard to comprehend, isn't it? Yes, it really is. When you're ripping off 20 yards plus several times, that's what Dane has done. I guess he's done it in a hurry. A career-high day for him, the third-highest single-game rushing performance in Wisconsin history. And now they'd just like to give it to this guy about 10 more times and go uh, 78 yards. That's what Wisconsin would like to do. The only thing you wonder now, does he begin to wear down? Right. That time he got up holding his arm. And remember, Carl McCullough can come in now. He's a pretty good running back, rushed for 1,000 yards a year ago. There he is, number 13. Could come in with some fresh legs right now. He has not carried the ball today, McCullough. And a timeout taken by Wisconsin with 9 minutes, 32 seconds left. They're clinging to an 8-point lead. How'd you do on the math test? No. What happened? I tripped over this. Where do you think it goes? It was that way. It was fun. Houston, we have a problem. Roger. Must be a couple of gremlins down here. It's not TV. It's HBO. With Sierra's strength and exceptional power, life's daily obstacles are easily handled. But with Sierra's third door, you will have one less hurdle to overcome. Sierra by GMC. Putting you comfortably in command. If more top mechanics use one motor oil over any other brand in their own cars and trucks, maybe it's time you changed your oil. 
Valvoline, the number one choice of America's top mechanics. McDonald's new crispy chicken deluxe with an all-white meat breast filet, fresh lettuce, and tomato on a bakery soft roll. It's a grown-up reminder that you're never too old to drool. It's McDonald's with a grown-up taste. Brad Nestler, Gary Danielson, Adrian Karsten, Camp Randall Stadium as shadows are cast over half this field now. And Wisconsin's opening. There won't be another shadow cast on this ball game. But they at one point led 24 to nothing. Rod Dane broke one tackle and carries John Crick with him out close to a first down. He might have gotten it. Just looks like he's getting a little worn down, but then he's had yeah. quite a day. One thing you notice uh, as you come here to Camp Randall is the home team is in the cold part of the stadium. And as the shadows start to creep, you can see the Wisconsin guys, a lot of their guys have parkas on. If you look at the other sideline, Purdue in the sun, not very many guys on the other side have a parkas on, a little warmer over there. I'll tell you what side we're on. We're on the shade side. Yeah, we're definitely shaded. <laughs> Third down and short. Big play right here for Wisconsin. Samuel's going to do it himself for the first down. They needed that one just to continue going in a positive direction with less than nine minutes to play in the ballgame. Let's check in with Mike Tirico. Mike. All right, Brad, let's get everyone updated what's going on around the conference. Here's Illinois trying to move down the field. In a big hole against Iowa, swing pass to Robert Holcomb. We'll get it down to the one. Ty Gothard punches it in. Iowa's lead is 10. They have the ball third and 10 at the 45. Meantime, it's over in the big house. Michigan now 4-1 and one in the conference, handing Michigan State their second Big Ten loss. Well, there's some payback from 95. Two turnovers at the end of the half. Difference in that football game. Difference in this game is a touchdown and a two-point conversion. First down, Wisconsin. Ron Dane might have been his shortest gain of the day. Two-yarder. You know, the first carry of this series, Ron Dane took a shot high and low. And, and I'll tell you, he looked to me like he's lost a step. Here's the play. The first play after the touchdown, Chikeo Keeper hits him high. Joe Hagans hits him low. And it looks like his ankle's a bit ginger. Mm -hmm. If you know what that means. Yep, I got it. I've been around you long enough to know what that means. See, I just use any word. I just Doesn't it. matter. We'll all get it. <laughs> 244 yards on the ground. This time stood up by Jamel Coleman, who he ran over earlier in this game, and only a one-yard gain. So the gains are getting shorter. Yeah. Ron's getting a little more tired, but he has the second-best rushing performance ever by a Wisconsin back. He passed Terrell Fletcher a couple of carries ago. Terrell had a game of, as a senior against Duke, where he ran for 241. Well, I said that other third down. Well, every third down yeah, is huge. I guess really it's obvious. This is third and seven. Ty Smith's halfway out to the pass mark on the far side, trying to get the Purdue defense set up the way he wants them. Huntley, the tight end in motion. Right in Lyles. Now Samuel rolls, throws, incomplete. Broken up by Coleman. Hayes was the intended receiver. And it's punting time for Wisconsin. Third down and long. Ty Smith came with the blitz again from the outside. Cheeky O'Keefer right there. Middle of your screen is going to come in. It's a bootleg action. He let Samuel get outside of him, but made it a tough throw to the outside. Pretty good coverage. It would have had to have been a perfect pass to get the first down. John Hall had a long punt in the first half. He'd like to blast one here with Derek Brown waiting on the other end. Kick. This guy's a weapon. Brown dropped it. I think Purdue got back on top of it. Penalty markers all over the place as well. Wisconsin saying they have it. Purdue saying they have it. The official says Purdue ball. That ends that speculation. Wonder if they were blocking from behind or holding that uh, hawk from the outside on the play anyway, and they're going to even back it up farther. You're right, holding.
Bryant, number three this time, is going to be the guy that could have got the ball, but you can see the holding on the play, and Purdue was very fortunate to get that ball back. That could have been the football game right there with another turnover. Brown covered it. Purdue has it with 6.46 left, trailing by eight. Yes, I do. Oh, so do I. <laughs> Ameritech has made cellular much more fun. Win a free Motorola StarTac phone and free cellular service for 20 years in the Ameritech Match and Win game. Visit your nearest Ameritech location to play. Grays Lake Cellular, 409 South, Route 83, 858-9955. Ameritech, your link to better communication. What do customers love most about Anthony Pontiac Buick? They saved me a lot of money. I'm very pleased, very pleased with the savings. I think I saved quite a bit. Anthony saved me a lot of money. What about Anthony's selection and service? I just love it. Every Pontiac Buick and used car is clearance priced right now. Right here at Anthony Pontiac Buick. Don't miss it. Anthony Pontiac Buick. 2727 Belvedere. The price is right here. Relationship with the NFL and the NBA, we educate first-year players on how to deal with us, with the media. It's kind of like our own rookie camp. All right, you guys have money, but you don't have attitude. You're too nice. It's pathetic. You're the man. Say it. You're the man. I'm the man. Oh, I'm the man. Come I'm on, the man. Gotta be like, I'm the man. You gotta raise it up like that. Buff up a little bit. You. I'm the man. 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 I tell you what, it's working. We're making a difference. <laughs> Six minutes and 46 seconds left. It's pretty simple for Purdue. They've had three 80-yard touchdown marches today. They need one longer than that to have a chance to get back in this game. Watson looked like he'd be bottled up in the line of scrimmage, but he got out for about four yards to the 12 as we check in with Mike Tirico. Mike? Brad, even though Tennessee got a scare, able to pull away late in the fourth quarter against South Carolina. What a day for Peyton Manning. This touchdown to Joey Kent. He threw for 362 yards and two scores on the day. Tennessee beats South Carolina by 17. And here in the Big Ten, it is 33 to 25, Wisconsin. Kind of a wild game. Second and six. Wisconsin thinks about a blitz. They come with it delayed. Penalty marker down. No gain on the play and a flag. Tarek Sala got in the backfield that time and Pete Monty cleaned it up on the inside. When you got Sala and Monty involved in the same play, good things are going to happen. They don't pick up this flag. <laughs> they may decline the penalty, though. There's no gain on the play. That's being talked about right now. Here's another one of those in-betweener calls. That either either way you call it, you you know, it is you a second guess tough yourself. Call. Absolutely. Yeah. You want you want uh, third and seven, but you're only going to get half the distance to the goal. It's going to be uh, second and thirteen. Holding on the offense. Decline. Third down. Well, there's the call. Decline. Let's check in with Adrian. Brad, consider this. The Badgers have provided all the actual game balls today, and they've been throwing in older balls. Balls are more chewed up for Mike Samuel because he likes the better grip on those balls. They've been throwing the uh, same ball in for Tresker, who does not like the kind of grip he gets from there. Now, what Purdue has done is requested from the Badger ball boys the newer footballs. that has got a tackier feel to it on this drive. Well, that one's got Purdue written on it, so maybe that'll help him. I don't know. Third down at six. Will the declining of the penalty pay off for Wisconsin or not? Trester, the out, throws it high, but throws it good for a first down. He needed six, and he got nine to Isaac Jones. And Purdue keeps it alive. Right to the outside, you're going to see the cushion right here, right back there. Too much cushion when it's third and seven. You can't move back that deep. You know, that was one of those decisions where you're hoping that, hey, maybe we'll get enough pressure on the quarterback. Right. You can't make that throw. But a, very, a, a secondary that's given up a lot of yardage today is still giving up a lot of space. Pushing. Pressure play action. Throws a deep out. Tillman. Tillman got around subtle. 
Suttle got back to make the tackle, hung with him, but Tillman's got it down to the 46-yard line, a 33-yard pickup. And that is booze you hear. I think you can hear as the crowd, the Badger crowd, is getting frustrated with this secondary. Wisconsin is last in the Big Ten in quarterback percentage of throwing, 58% on the year. And right now, Rick Trefsker has taken advantage of a secondary that does not feel confident in their matchups. Wisconsin led this game 24 to nothing. They lead still by eight, with less than five minutes to go, but Purdue on the march again, led by Trefsker. Watson, and Watson picks up about five down near the 41-yard line. Remember, a couple of weeks ago, we were here after the fumble by Ron Dane. It was Schnur, the pump and go to Bates. And that one ended up being the capper for Northwestern in their victory. And you know that Barry Alvarez certainly doesn't want to see that happen again today. 4.20 left. Watson's over 100 yards on the ground to go with Tresker's sensational day throw in the football. Makes the pitch. A lot of time. Back over the middle to Oliver Dottie. Flag down in the secondary. And let's see if there was a defensive holding. On Wisconsin. Isn't that their fight song? <laughs> they wanted to sing that in the fifth quarter today. I don't know if they're going to be or not. Anytime a quarterback moves around in the pocket like that, you get a Holy lot of on the defense. guys. Ten-yard foul, first down. They, they get a little bit nervous back there. This is a very long play. Pete Monty grabs the hand that time of the tight end jewel as he comes across. That's the one they call the flag goes down early in the play. And so no matter what would have happened, it would have been a first down in that situation. I could have taken the penalty or the play. Both were about of equal distance. And that gets it down to the 32-yard line where it's going to be first down for Purdue at the Wisconsin 32. Less than four minutes left. And the way Purdue is doing it through the air right now, you wonder if it's a mistake that will make the difference one way or the other in this game because they're marching down for what could be a tie. Of course, they need a touchdown and a two-point conversion to achieve that. Trescher throws high. Was it caught or not? Ball loose. They're going to say incomplete. Boy, I thought that one was caught and stripped. A call has not gone the way for Wisconsin all day. Jason Suttle that time is the guy who made the strip. And I think on that play, we might even catch that one of the officials threw down his marker on the completed pass. Let's see if we can get it. Right there, that is a catch, and that is a strip. That is a horrible call right there. And another break for Purdue in that situation. Second down and 10 at the 32. Just over three and a half for remaining. Oliver Dottie, the motion man across the field. Prescott, the slant, man there, Tillman. Tillman's got a first down and he's got a first and goal for Purdue. And wait a minute, we have another flag down? Yeah. You gotta believe it's gonna turn here for Wisconsin. They're gonna get a call. You just have to believe that someone's gonna say, hey, this is not going well. Ineligible downfield. The ball was thrown so quickly that time. How could there be an ineligible receiver unless they lined up wrong on the play? Yes, that's exactly what happened right here. Both wide receivers were on the line of scrimmage. I assume this guy went out. It was an ineligible receiver downfield on the play. Good call. Finally won in Wisconsin's direction. Covered receiver downfield. Repeat, second down. That's exactly what it is, what Gary just explained. And that, both receivers have to work their way through that one as Jim Coletto is giving it, I assume, in that situation to the receiver coach. You don't want to be around Jim when things go wrong. Uh -uh. Second down at 15 as we approach three minutes remaining. Pressure. 
with some pressure. Lofted and incomplete. Lamar Campbell almost intercepted it. Rick Trepsker bought himself some time. There was some action in that backfield, that's for sure. But he stepped up around the pressure again and got the throw away. Turowitz that time thought he had him for about 10 seconds that time on that play. <laughs> Trepsker like he had eyes in his helmet, in the back of his helmet, and waited till the last possible second and then lobbed one up there for everybody to catch. Nobody did, so it's third and 15. Matthews comes in. Jewel the tight end. Rick Trescher's had quite a day. He hasn't been sacked in the second half, but Wisconsin keeps bringing it at him. They're only going to bring a three-man rush, it appears here, unless they come with a blitz. Third and long. Trescher, he's getting some pressure. Sala had a hand on him. Trescher loads it, goes, it is intercepted by Campbell. Lamar Campbell back the other way. And the much maligned secondary of Wisconsin finally gets their gift. Sometimes things turn on the littlest play. Two receivers lined up on the line of scrimmage might be the biggest play of the game. That's right. Jim Coleno still thinking about that one. Still 2.44 left, but Wisconsin's got it back. Perhaps even more impressive than pure, unbridled power is the ability to harness it. largest insurance and investment groups managing 300 billion dollars in assets 56,000 people in 23 countries AXA here you already know us as the equitable AXA go ahead you can rely on us hey try this for a mantra I like the rain. I like the rain. I want it to rain. I want to wallow in the mud and slop with reckless abandon. And when I die, I want to say that I did carpe the diem, no matter how cold, how wet, and how nasty the diem was. Trepsker has spilled it all on the field today, Gary, and that last play he's still thinking about. You said he hadn't been sacked, but this time Mark Fisher, the tackle right here, is matched up against Sala at the end of the line of scrimmage. He misses Sala, and then he just gets confused and bumps right into Trepsker. That takes about five yards off the throw, interception on the play. And a penalty on the first play for Wisconsin offensively. Illegal procedure against the Badgers. Two forty-one left. Lamar Campbell's interception has given it back to Wisconsin with a chance to snap a four-game losing streak. And Dane yeah, finally limping that, off. That has you could see when Dane got hit on that play the first carry after. The touchdown by Purdue, that ankle has just gotten worse and worse. And now McCullough has to come in. And remember, he warmed up, what, three and a half hours ago? I was going to say, he's, he can't be ready to play. I mean, we'll find out. He's probably going to get a handle right away, but he hasn't touched the ball yet. That's a scary situation. Hayes in motion. Here is Carl McCullough. Hurdled his way down to the 45. Now he's got his feet wet, and Purdue calls a timeout. They take one as well. Two minutes and 12 seconds remaining in Madison. 
I can't believe I'm losing my hair back here. Like father, like son. Yeah, right. Look, if you want to regrow some hair, check this out. Rogaine? Don't you need a prescription? Not anymore. How's it work? Rogaine goes to the root of your hair and for some people gets it to grow. What have you got to lose? Nothing, I guess. Except more hair. That's been easy to use. <laughs> and it's starting to work. See, there's room for growth in every relationship. Rogaine. Medically proven to regrow hair. Jimmy, light up the court. And hit the radio, man. Every day, car batteries are put to the test. And every day, America's most trusted lives up to its name. Die Hard. Tried and true. Northwest has a network that will take me any place I need to go. That might be Boston one day and Beijing the next. Vienna, they say to me, some people just know how to fly. Go fly. Rick Trapsker on the sideline, hoping somehow to get another opportunity to get the ball back for Purdue's offense. But they have one timeout, all they have remaining. But Wisconsin has a third down, and uh, today they're 50% on their third down conversions. This is a long one, though. Third down and eight. Remember the last call, they tried to get Samuel outside the pocket so he could do something with it. He also had a big quarterback scramble against Michigan, uh, Michigan State for a touchdown. That might be another way of trying to pick this thing up. Simmons isn't in there. It's Merritt and Hayes, the wide receivers. They'll just hand it off to McCullough. And McCullough smacked right away by that Purdue defense that is fired up and is going to give their offense an opportunity to get the ball back. And you could see what the strategy was right there. Barry Alvarez did not have confidence in putting Mike Samuel in the middle of trying to win this game. He said, if we're going to lose it, we're going to lose, you know, the worst we can do is tie. Right. Let's not let them have a quick touchdown on this play with an interception. And now Wisconsin will use as much clock as possible before they punt. One thirty-five and winding down. And they might take a delay a game, as a matter of fact. Doesn't hurt them. Yep. Oh, they took a timeout. That, they that's did. one of those situations where somebody just kind of panics. It'd be better just to just let a delay a game go, but Monty knew he only had ten guys out there, took a timeout. No big deal. That gives us, with 125 remaining, a chance to tell you who our Kelly Springfield players of the game are. Was there ever a doubt? Rick Trapsker in release, in, in relief of John Reeves. 286 yards and a touchdown on the day for the senior. And from Wisconsin, I don't think we doubted this even at halftime. Ron Dane, that is the second best rushing performance in Wisconsin history. 244 yards, a couple of rushing touchdowns. Kelly Springfield, proud to donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund on behalf of those two guys. Well, now does Purdue set up the return, or do they bring the kitchen sink at John Hall, who's set to punt here? Now, I think they're going to set up the return. Hall at his own 40. Oh, they're going for the block. They are. They're bringing they're, they're their safety guy down. Back there. This is where you get it and kick it in a hurry. They Pete Monty's trying to tell Hall that. Grab it and get rid of it. All he needs to do is pooch it over the line of scrimmage here. Oh, he took quite a while, but he got the kick away. And it goes all the way to the end zone. So Purdue back at the 20-yard line. 46-yard kick. That was pretty close. Don't forget the residents in college scoreboard show coming up following our ball game that has 118 remaining. Mike Tirico will be along to update you on all the scores and highlights from around the country. Michigan, a winner over Michigan State today. Wisconsin trying to hang on against a feisty batch of Boilermakers who still have another shot now. 118 left. They have one timeout remaining. Purdue does. Low snap on the shotgun. Trepsker steps up in the pocket. The safety valve is Watson. And they're keeping him desperately, trying to keep him in bounds, and they do. A pickup of about six. And we're going to be down under a minute the next time Purdue snaps it. 
Sala is the guy they have to account for on every play. Wisconsin's only rushing three players. They need help over there. Sala on the top of your screen. They throw it right back to Watson. This time he does get out of bounds. And he gets out with a first down. With 50 seconds remaining in each team with one timeout left. What you have to do if you're a quarterback in a two-minute offense or a hurry-up offense, you need to stay patient. Move the chains, get a pass midfield, and then think about getting to the end zone. Pressure. Floated one. Matthews caught it. Across the field he goes and dives oh. out of bounds. That's like a touchdown run getting out of bounds on that play right there. That time is as important as yards yep. on a short pass. Saved him a timeout. And probably the worst shot he took all day was self-inflicted, although Lysa got him from behind yeah, as he, he tried to get out of it. He fell on his foot, but he dove and laid out for a touchdown. Adamov is also there, and it, boy, that was a big play. Second down and seven. 42 seconds remaining. They're still blocking solid with just one guy. Here he comes. Trexter delivers. The 45, another first down Purdue. Now do they hurry up or do they use their timeout? I think you get up under center right now because there's only 35 seconds and ground the ball. You don't need all three downs now. Ground the ball. Trepsker does and stops it with 34 seconds left. They don't have time to have a sustained march now. Now they have to start throwing downfield. The game's going to have to get vertical right now. Yep. Wisconsin, if there's ever a time to use a prevent defense, this is when to do it. Keep everything in front, I'm sure, is what they're being told. Wisconsin trying to get out of a four-game slump. Purdue trying to pull a come-from-behind miracle to force an overtime here. Tresker has time. Goes short over the middle of Watson. Now he'll head to the sideline and the first down marker. He got the sideline, but not the first down marker. And stops it with 25 seconds left. Anxiety on both sides, as you might imagine. Third down and about three. Tresker got the first down, and it's down the middle. And now they may have to use the timeout. They could also ground the ball again. The clock is going to stop. While they move the chain. Right. Get up there and take a couple seconds. That's worth saving a timeout for. And they do. Only use two seconds. So doing it exactly how it's drawn up and finding themselves now 38 yards away from what could be a tie. They still need a touchdown and a two-point conversion. They need to throw the ball deeper, though. They do just don't have enough time to keep throwing these 8-10 yarders because they've only got about three plays left. Exactly. Kretzker from the gun. Sala, I think, forced a flinch over yeah. there on yeah, Fisher. Fisher. Unless Fisher did it on his own. At any rate, he rocked back on his heels a little bit, and that'll be five yards the other way. to lean back because he knows he has Salah, who was just out for two or three plays resting and getting a fresh win. Man to man. Only one guy blocking. No help. Kretzker steps up in the pocket. Over oh, the middle. He floated one and dropped. Pete Monty had it and couldn't find the handle. <laughs> Went through his hands, through his stomach, his through legs. his legs, his feet, and then finally hit the turf. Yep. He's got to be a tired linebacker. He's been out there a while. And the timeout has been used. Purdue's got maybe two tosses to the end zone yeah, left. You, they, I, that's exactly what I would do. I'd throw two to the end zone, two jump balls back there, and give it a shot. You got third and fourth down here. I would throw the ball to the end zone both times, get up there and say, let's maybe something good will happen. Yep. As many bad things that's happened to Wisconsin this year. Yeah, who's to say <laughs> that it couldn't happen again, huh? Don't you know Wisconsin and their fans, of which none have left a packed Camp Randall Stadium thinking the same thing. Can anything more bad happen? 12 seconds, all that remains. The freshman was sensational on offense today for Wisconsin. Ron Dane, 244-yard outing. 
Don't forget, Mike Tirico, residence in college scoreboard show coming up following our game, which may or may not be over in 12 seconds. We'll let you know in 12 seconds. Purdue has run 103 plays. Trester loads it, lays it out long. Intercepted by Wisconsin. Kevin Huntley with the pick. And five seconds, all that's left, and Wisconsin will snap their losing streak. And they'll take over at the 20-yard line. Well, they had two shots to the end zone. Brian Alper was in the vicinity. Yeah. And Huntley had that ball. He really didn't go up all that high to get it. So the ball got there just a little bit before Alford to get there, or that ball might have been in play. Huntley is at the back end, and usually you coach him to knock it down in this situation. Goes up, catches it in his chest on the play, so that could have been disastrous. Wow, that was close. So Wisconsin's a snap away from evening their record at four and four and getting their first Big Ten victory of the season. I'm sure it seems like two months since they've had a win, but they snap their losing skid and win today. Final score, Wisconsin 33, Purdue 25. For Gary Danielson and Adrian Karsten, Brad Nessler saying so long. For Madison, now let's send it to Mike Tirico. All right, guys, thank you. So that 24-0 lead nearly went away for Wisconsin, but Barry Alvarez, as Brad mentioned, getting win one of the season. Welcome to an abbreviated edition of the Residence in College Football Scoreboard. In a few minutes, we'll be joining ESPN News, a simulcast of part of the opening weekend. I'll give you a sample of what you can see if you call your local cable operator or sab satellite provider as ESPN News is in day two. We will get to that in a minute. First, we want to get you updated, Big Ten fans, on what happened in the conference uh, thus far today. Starting with Ohio State struggling with Minnesota. This was a scoreless game with about five minutes left of the second.